And here we are back again. What's happening, everybody? How are we doing? I hope all is well. I hope everybody's day is well, was well, is still well, and going to be well. It's a pleasure to be back with our friends and our community and future members of this community. Without further ado, let me bring in the man of the hour who everybody came to see, Mr. Hey, I love this introduction shit. I'm enjoying this introduction stuff. I could see Timmy looking at me backstage. I enjoy the introduction more than the show, just to let everybody know. It's like my only chance to really like, that's my moment to shine, Timmy. You got to understand. Ladies and gentlemen, Timmy, what's happening, Timbo? Hey, Craig, how you doing? I'm good, brother. What is the good word? You family all right? Everybody good? Everybody's good. It's good to see you. Timmy, do me a favor. Um, not that it's an issue. If you if you can raise your mic a little bit. I don't know if you can. Let me hear. I'm going to have to go on the phone. I'm happy. Oh, you're good. You're good. It's all right. You're good. I just saw um, before we get started, I'm going to say the hello to everybody in the chat. I want to start off with, because his name is popping up first, Sideline Scout, Antonio Gatto, who's related to the guy that's talking. And let me say hello to my granddaughter, who's looking at her papa right now. I love you, Carmela. Pops loves you. Always know that. And Santino, if you listen to the Pops, I love you, bud. Cinnamon Girl, thank you. Go ahead, Timmy. I'm going to switch over. I'm having problems with the... Go ahead. I'll take you down and you come back in. Oh. Let me continue. Benny, what's up, my brother? Sally Boy, what's happening? Dave T, my man. Maddie, what's up, brother? Are you going to doze off on me, Bucky? What's happening, my man, Buck? Always good to see you, Buck. Always good. We got a good one tonight. Um, you know, I mean, I think they've all been good. Some, you know, obviously are better than others. This one, um, <laughs> thank you. She, I, you know, I would love to show you them what they look like. Uh, they, uh, wow, they did too much. I don't want to be that, the grandfather that's bragging, right? No, I'm not going to do that. Um, this one's a good one. This one's a real good one. I remember it when it happened, and um, it was good. Timmy, can you hear us now, buddy? Um, Timbo. All right, we'll get Timmy up here, but we're going to get um, – let me drop another link for Tim. Um, he's trying to get back in. So we'll just keep going. Davey T, I hope you're well. Thank you guys for saying hello to my grandchildren. I appreciate that very much. More than the 11 note. Um, my man, Nick, what's happening? I see my, it feels like we haven't talked in what, at least uh, 10 minutes. Nick is great people. I can't stress this enough like we do with everybody. When I tell you, show this man, Nick, some love like we show everybody. He, Tommy Real Deal, Nick, unbelievable people like everybody in this room right now. Unbelievable. Great people. So without further ado, let me bring in the Bronx Bomber himself. I love to make him laugh. Mr. Timmy Irish, what's happening, brother? Hey, Craig. I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with the sound in that laptop. It's, it's beautiful right now, man. I switched to the phone. I, I apologize. <laughs> maybe that's what we're going to do. Jimmy's going to pop in. I'm afraid if he hears this, maybe if we get Jimmy on the phone last week, uh, we had that issue with the sound. StreamYard, could, they couldn't give me an answer. So there had to be something... I don't know, but sometimes it's crazy. You know, you could have a nice setup, a, a 
good mic, all of that shit. And it is what it is, but we're going to get moving. Timmy, before, without, you know, because like I said, in that Corrales-Castillo fight, I'm, I'm an avid fight guy, you know that. I had, in 2005, I never saw the fight. And I told you, I, I guess I was working a lot and I missed that fight. So I actually saw that fight for the first time that night. And right. it was amazing. So without giving too much away, because you never know who didn't see this fight or who saw it, you want to give a little bit about what they're going to see? Yeah, well, uh, Vitaly Klitschko, everybody knows, is the brother of Vladimir Klitschko. But he waited like almost four years for this fight. And this is Lennox Lewis's uh, last fight. This is the last fight he ever had. But Lewis is coming off a victory over Tyson. And I think it took, they signed the fight, but to get the fight to happen, it took a year. So when you win the championship, you know, a lot of money is a lot of party and a lot, of, you know, a lot, a lot of happiness when you do something like that. But the deal, what it is, is when you become champion, like I give you an example, Rocky Marciano. When Marciano knocked out Walcott, it was a brutal fight. And Walcott, you know, really put it on him. And uh, five o'clock the next morning, Marciano gets up and he wakes up his best friend, Ali Colombo. And he says, come on, let's go running. And Colombo says to him, what are you talking about, Rock? He goes, you just won the heavyweight championship last night. He goes, that's right, and I'm going to keep it. So that that's, and you'll see a different Lennox Lewis in that fight. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I can't blame the guy when you're a champion. And, you know, back then it took a long time to get a, you know, to sign fights. You remember that era. It was always posturing for more money. Absolutely. But uh, this turned to be a good one. You know, it really did. All right. So without further ado, I say we jump into it. Let's get this rolling. We're going to do what we always do. Let the fight go through. In between, I'll ask you maybe a couple of things, but we'll save it for after um, and go through it. Um, let's get it on. One second. Mr. Iron Fist, Vitali. By the way, Timmy, we're sitting in Madison Square Garden. That's what the background is. And oh, is it? Well, well I tried the best, bud, but... Wearing white with red I saw a lot of fights in the garden, in the felt forum. And one half pounds. Osada, in hope all as well. He captured Olympic Grand gold, and now, pleasure. as a professional, he has a record of... We have somebody in the chat that was just telling me we'll talk about it later. With one um, and by way of rematch, about he is one of the few and, fighters uh, in boxing history who have defeated every opponent he has ever faced. From London, England, the linear, legitimate, universally Dolly recognized, boy, been undisputed, heavyweight, you. always good, go to see you, pal. Bryce Joe Jotown's not in yet. He'll be in. I was going to wear headgear tonight. I got to Monday night. No, Timmy, next Monday when you're in here with me, I'm going to have headgear on. Do you know what he meant when he called him the linear heavyweight champion? I believe it was a new belt, right? Or some shit. I don't know. Go ahead. No, it's when the champion is undisputed and the contender beats the champion. Then he becomes the undisputed champion. They call that the linear champion because it went from one undisputed champion to another. And, and Klitschko doesn't look Let's all that much get better. Let's get it on. Here we go. That's true. Let me see if I can make this screen bigger for you. But I do know that this fight as an event was upgraded from business class to first class when Klitschko became a part of it. Will it be upgraded as a fight? He entered to the strains of the Eagles Hotel California. So will it be heaven or will it be hell? For Vitaly Klitschko, most critics think it will be hell. And they look like John L. Sullivan and James J. Corbett before Lennox comes forward and lands the right hand. 
Lennox Lewis is not an effective aggressor. He likes to catch you missing him and catch you with one. And he's not jumping around. He likes to jump in and out. Although no his football. trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, insists George Foreman that when faced with taller fighters, he has gone forward and been the aggressor. That's one of the things Emmanuel expects tonight. That's not his stuff. He likes to bounce. He just did a little bounce there. Both guys are getting low. No one is taking advantage of the height. And both are fighters who tend to use their height to their advantage and fight behind the high guard. Natale trying to land a looping right hand over the top. Lewis doesn't believe that Klitschko can improvise. Believes that Klitschko must be set up and in position to have a chance to land punches. You see, when two tall guys get in the ring, it calls for a lot of clutching because nobody has room to move out of the way. One move and they're together. Klitschko is being much more aggressive than uh, experts thought he would be. It was thought that he would try to fight a more tactical fight. Let's go with the right. Lewis misses with the left. Let's go pawing with his punches, but throwing punches as Lewis has not gotten his jab going early. Lennox Lewis throughout his career has been indomitable when throwing more than 30 jabs per round. He's not going to reach 30 jabs in this round unless he speeds up the pace. <laughs> George, why is Klitschko holding his left so low? Well, Lennox Lewis is not standing so high, as you see. They both start squatting after a while. When a guy's hand are that high, you just got to bring him a little low. Hard right hand by Klitschko, best punch of the round. Lennox Lewis is doing the old kitchen. He's standing right in the middle of the ring and using his shoulders now to catch shots. Now, there's a good jab by Lewis to back Klitschko off. Another little right hand inside by Vitaly. And again, Lewis That's dead the backward. That's the jab that you've been waiting on. Lennox Lewis is starting to get a little effective with. And he's starting to get warmed up is what's really happening, George. Not so tentative anymore. Two good jabs by Lewis. Now there's a looping right hand that misses big. A lot of elbows. Yeah. Uppercut by Lewis lands to end the round as we go to. You never know, Timmy, how they do it. It looks like this will be the good way. Uh, they'll slow it down in between rounds. So, what did you have that round? Klitschko, I had in that round. But you see, I didn't want to say before the fight, look how soft Lennox Lewis's midsection is. And yeah. right away, you could tell he's out of shape. Yep. And, and full disclosure before it goes to the next round, in my opinion, I thought Vitaly was the much better fighter than Vladimir. He just had, you know, we'll talk about it later. And that was just my opinion. Yeah, he's not just a fighter. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Uh, tougher. Uh, maybe Vladimir was a better boxer. Vitaly, tougher, more hard. I don't know. I, I just like Vitaly better than Vladimir. Me, Vladimir. Well, he could punch harder. But the problem with Vitaly is he holds his left down all the time. And when you're in the heavyweight, you pay a price for that. Here we go, round two. Got his jab going late in the round, as you saw. And now Lewis begins to jab Klitschko backward again. Klitschko has got to get back and just counter that right. GDM, that how are you? I know this is a real thing. <laughs> how are you, GDM? Counter that left jab because Lewis is throwing it oh, he's up. He's that Make him afraid to throw it if you're Klitschko. Make him afraid of it. This is a far cry from the Lennox Lewis who did a paint job on Mike Tyson in Memphis last year. He doesn't yet look sharp as he did in that fight. Well, he's got a different left hand lands for Klitschko. Lewis momentarily stunned by the little left. No, 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 no. I think that Lewis is quite surprised at the aggression of Klitschko. And Klitschko trying to launch the right hand again. This time, Lewis partially blocks it. Lewis just hasn't, just can't seem to wake up. You come in the ring dry. You catch a lot of shots before you can wake up. But this Klitschko guy, the fighter's his. All he has to do is reach out and get it. 
with awkward short arm shots. He's feeding Lewis to the punch. He rips him again with the right hand. Lewis momentarily wobbles. Oh, wow, it has hurt. As Patelli goes after him. Oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's definitely wobbled. Straight wow. Right hand that wobbled Lewis. Maybe Lewis mm. knows what he's in with now, but it may be too late. Combinations for an increasingly confident Vitaly Klitschko. Oh, man, it's hitting him with right hand again. Now, this is what a fight could tell off on Klitschko because that's a big heavy oh, man. Boy. He's around. You throw those kind of heavy shots and you get tired yourself. Big left hand by Klitschko. Lewis wobbling again. Suddenly it looks as though Lennox may have made a fateful decision in choosing to take this fight with only two weeks notice. Oh, oh nice there by Lewis. Klitschko in his tracks. That changes the flow. Look where Klitschko's hands are. You can bet Emmanuel Stewart's going to have a lot to say to Lennox if he can make it out of this round. Oh, he's Klitschko trying to land that right hand one more time. Well, I've never seen Lennox look this bad. Ducking and yeah. They trade big right hands. Lewis gets the worst of it. This is Gary Ward on the highest wow, level. Wow, he, he, yeah, he, he's a heavyweight banging like this. Incredible. Now, all of this clutching and holding is going to have an effect on Tesco. That man is heavy, Lennox Lewis. What do you think? Hey, hey, Nick, what do you think? Are these guys banging or what? A heavyweight. The Tommy Klitschko is roughing Lennox Lewis up. Oh. As the second round begins to come down the stretch. There's a big rug over the eyes. Wow, with some round. I'm going to go to our fight doctor at the desk, Dr. Timothy Irish. Timmy, what did you have that round? I like Klitschko in that round. Matty asked how tall he was. Klitschko 6'7", and Lewis is 6'5". Lewis has a three-inch reach advantage, though. One of my favorite trainers of all time. Obviously, I'm Tommy Hernstein. I love the manual still. You did it very, very well. Crunk Jim. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Here's the big punch. Bang! That, that round. A straight right that got under the left of Lewis. He missed it. For some reason, Vitaly didn't fight like a robot, like his brother. And a lot of European fighters said that he back didn't in the see day. Any skill level in Klitschko. His defense is terrible. He's seeing something yeah. now. He came to bring war. Lennox Lewis walking unevenly to the middle of the Oh, he just got caught. Oh, no! All right, Timmy, tell me how my head movement looks. <laughs> we got Klitschko up 2 nothing. Yeah. Lennox is coming out here. Using the rough house tactics, rough house tactics that we might have expected him to use. Someone is bleeding pretty good. You know what it is when you're big like that and you're that close. There's not that much room to fight. I'm wondering if Lewis hit him with an elbow. I, I didn't see it. I, I didn't see if he did. Yeah, maybe after the round we'll see because he's gushing blood. I think it's that left hand. Oh, what a right hand. There has never been. Sorry, everybody, if you hear me with outlandish screams, I can't control it. Maybe I'm in therapy. It's not like the rest of all of this. You can't watch fights. Keep it coming. And another. Doesn't throw it all that often. Land in both of those. Give my wife's number. She'll tell you all about it. Just go as hurt. And he lands a huge right hand on Lewis. If he can oh. just continue, he can win it. Long way to go in round three. One right hand. Been hurt a lot. Left hook by Klitschko. There's a throw on leather, right, Timmy? Yeah. Top. Now he begins to jab away at Klitschko. Benny, oh. Benny, I know you love this one. This is a beauty, huh? It's just a piercing. It's banging like guys. this. He's busted wide open, Klitschko. Wide yeah. open, man. I want to see what that cut looks like. He can win this if he doesn't stop by the eyes. Too much blood coming out of the eyes. All credit goes to Timmy on that one, gentlemen. Get to land his big right hand. When will it Thank come? You. Will it come? What? Oh. I think it's a good one. Wow, this is a Whoa! Big jab 
But it's talking about Hagler Hearns being the best three rounds in boxing. This has got to be up there. Holy shit. Oh. Oh, it was the open hand right there. Your bird is good for me, my brother. Oh, man. You know what Lennox must be thinking, Penny, as you know? Boy, I hit guys with less shots than this one that went out. This guy's taking my best shit. Yeah, yeah. And it, you can see that look on his face. No, 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 no. Well, he has a way better chin than his brother. Did, yeah, did he? Yeah. Oh, it seems like everything he hits Lewis with and, and the other way, too. They're both just like fucking this is All right. We got three rounds down. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, what do you got? I thought Lewis uh, fought good that round. I gave it to Lennox Lewis. Okay. Anybody else in the chat? We got two rounds, Klitschko, one round, Lewis, and that's about 70 stitches. I can't really see. That's a big one, boy. Woo! And it's in, Timmy, if you want to talk about how bad is that spot. Oh, that's a bad. Uh, if it starts bleeding into his eye, that's it. But yeah, that's not a cut. Oh, that's a wow. gash. He's looking at, yeah, he looked at it already. They're looking at it already. Oh, my that's God. um that cut man. Uh, that that's that's what Toro got. He's cut man. All right. Not Al Cerdo. No, no, no. I, I can't think of his name right now. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the, uh, who ha who was with him. Um, but I'm, I recognize him as Gaddy's uh, cut man. Let's see if we can catch man. the punch right there, right there. Don't oh, forget, yeah. Tim, Timmy, punch. don't forget, at the end of the, this, I need you to name every fighter I had in that intro. Uh, that's no problem, brother. Hey, yo, I know it's easy, man. I try to fool you with one, but I... So I'm gonna get, I'll make it tough for you. I'm gonna get it tough for you. It is some <laughs> epilogue. Round four. Here we go. Two rounds for one. All out war. Harold Letterman. Wow. Here we go. It's gonna get better. Round four. 29 28. Vitaly Klitschko. I gave Vitaly the first two. Lennox Lewis definitely the third for the good right hands. Oh. <laughs> they fall down together. Referee Lou Filippo is not going to. Imagine if he would have used jujitsu, he would have fucking went for a guillotine or, 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 or a box. Lewis has no legs. Lewis has no legs. Lewis yeah, he doesn't Lewis have any Lewis legs Lewis. at all. Exhausted. Look at his mouth wide open. Let's go, too. Look, look at how all pounds could go strong punches. The Lewis comeback. I, I was surprised. I never saw Lewis go up in this type of shape for a fight. Never. I'll tell you, by Vitaly, who's exhausted? Lennox is exhausted. The heart that they're both showing is incredible. Beginning to regain some of his technical form. Both fighters very tired already. Bucky, you still around, Buck? Big men have a difficulty fighting at this pace. I'm sorry, but the corner's got to take a good look at this guy's eye. I know it's a world heavyweight title match and all that, but a man has got to see for the rest of his life as well. Are you surprised they didn't stop it, George? I'm very surprised. I'm not surprised at all in a heavyweight championship fight. Why don't I think Klitschko yep. is determined to redeem the Klitschko name in terms of his courage and his will. One and shot, he can do it, too. One right hand. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, Dave, I agree with you. Really I think it was an overhand, right? Oh, he's got heart. Yeah. He's not even asking. Oh, he keeps hitting him with it, too. That cut is bad. It's a long ways up there for Lennox Lewis trying to throw that right hand. That right hand landed for Klitschko. Lewis blocking that right hand. Vitaly still getting oh. four punches. And Lennox. Lewis taking advantage of the glimpse to pound Vitaly to the belly. Sloppy left hook by Lewis. 
in close. He brings the right hand over the top and hits the cut again. Left hand right onto the damage die by Lewis. Round four coming to a close. Lewis appears wow. to be really tired. This, we've never seen this Lennox Lewis before. All right, Timmy, I know I'm going to see it the way you did, but I, you know, I defer to you. Timmy, what'd you have that round? Klitschko. I like Klitschko in that round. Three, one, Klitschko. Dave, anybody in the chat want to tell us what you had, especially if it goes against what Timmy says, please tell us. Cinnamon Girl, Cinnamon Girl, after all you learn, what do you have right now? Power in your left hand. Your tutor, and move it, Daniel's son, wants to know what do you have, Mr. Miyagi? Avoid his right hand, and then you use your left hand very quick. Timmy, you got like that eye closed pretty good. Yeah. Timmy, you're like Angelo Dundee to a lot of people. Time, he thought that everybody had a score. It means a lot, buddy. Something like yeah. Surely he knows. The danger he's in with his eye that badly cut. But in the fourth round, Klitschko got almost go. 66 punches to only 27 for Lewis. Yeah, that, the output. Lewis's output is gone. Yeah. Stop, stop, stop. What was Angelo Dundee's real last name? Klitschko has done an excellent I, I, job. I'm gonna, I got it. Because it wasn't an Italian last name. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I read it. It, it, it is Italian. It's spelled it is, in the not an I. Don't you tell me. I'm going to give it to you without looking it up. The, the Spanish people spell it with an I. Italian it, um, people spell it with an E. Yeah, I remember reading it recently. I don't you know, about a couple years ago. Um, and I was in a shop. It's a common name. As the tally takes it, takes it. Tell me, son of a bitch, I'll never forget it. Miranda. Miranda. I would have been wrong. I thought it was something else. But I knew it wasn't funny. If one guy's holding you, they have to break it. Lewis trying to land a haymaker. Natalie lands another right hand across the top. And Bob Lewis twice with the jab. The difference in energy level still significantly in favor of Vitaly Klitschko, but his eye begins to drain blood again. Dark thing. Absolutely. Lewis oh, wow. All he has to do is just take it. He hit, I got to tell you, he hit an exhausted Lennox, Lennox Lewis with everything, and he didn't go, what? He didn't go down. I never saw him in shape like that. I mean, that's why I brought up Tyson before the fight. He won the heavyweight championship, and I read him. He obviously didn't train for this. He can still do it. One good right hand, and Lennox Lewis is on the canvas. Well, Vitaly's certainly ahead on points. And the way he's throwing punches, he might stay that way. Oh, what a chance. Can finish the fight with that eye? Neither, one, neither one looks like he could finish the yeah, fight. Yeah, I ain't bad. Jim. No, Lewis doesn't look like he's going to make it to the finish line. Yeah. Just on sheer physical energy. But Lewis beginning to sharpen up his punches and landing at a higher and higher rate. Can't do it with the overhand rights tonight. Neither guy can do it with overhand right. They got to come straight down the middle with straight right hand. Well, you got to be sharper than this to be good with the right hand. Lennox is just winging, looping, haymakers. What do you got, Mr. Timmy Irish? No, I, I, I gave that to Lewis. Klitschko just laid on him the whole round. I mean. Clean that up. What do you got in the chat, guys? Deep what do you got in the chat? Give us some water. Maddie brought up a question about Clooney. I'll answer it after the fight. Okay. Maddie, don't fall asleep and those will find her. Clean that up for me. Breathe deep. 
I agree with you, Maddie. Ice, ice. Give me some ice. I, I truly did not like to really start Lennox Lewis until Mike Tyson told him he was going to eat his children and do all that stuff. And then I became the Lennox Lewis fan. Yeah. Man, that ice. Yeah. And he says he's got a 3 2 by Cal. Yeah. That's the five. Here we go. I tell you, Jim Lampley was great. One big right hand. His corner told him, throw the left hip hook. Just throw the right hand and come back with the hook. No, he's got no leg. Very hard round here. Okay, that, that hurt me. He hit him so hard. Yeah, I felt that from here. Yeah. So as long as a minute and a half has been going by between rounds, and that's got to be a help for Lewis, as exhausted as he looks at the end of these rounds. Lennox Lewis is so tired that if Disco just hit him with a combination, he'll go down. Lewis, flagrantly under condition for the fight, or so it would appear. And Vitaly trying to take advantage through a blinded left eye. Oh, what an uppercut. Lewis uppercut by Lewis. Disco holds on. He can no longer see. He's fighting on pure heart. This boy is now. Hey, guess what, guys? He can take a punch, too. And he's got heart. That was the kind of uppercut with which Lennox Lewis finished Michael Grant in Madison Square Garden. And he gets Anybody put him in the chat? That's why we won next week. Learning on the job. Lewis dabs him away. Good one oh. took by Lewis. Solid blow. Lewis exhausted again. But strong enough to fend Vitali off. Give me a way to that. We'll give you that right into the round, man. No respect for the power. All of the guys got hit. Hitting him hard, he has no respect. What did you say, Craig? He ought to have respect. He was wobbling. Yeah, I got a question for you. He has no respect. He hasn't decided yeah. I'm going to duck and bounce and hit. And stay out of the way of harm. The belief of Lewis and his trainer Emmanuel Stewart is that Fitzko has never fought at a pace this feverish and that he can't go the distance. Oh boy. He wasn't for that eye. It's Lewis who's having trouble with the pace. That's right. Oh, I remember when 10 years ago, when Evander Holyfield had the same feeling about Riddick Brown. You got it. You're the first one to answer, you got it. Oh, you don't want that. Let me know if you... It's all Lennox oh. Lewis can do to stand up. Not because... You got to let me know if that's what you really want, Benny. Because of his own exhaustion. What'd you have there, Timmy? I gave that round to Klitschko. All right, so we got Klitschko 4-2. If anybody had it different, let us know or let us know what we have. Going into round seven. We got a 4-2. Klitschko. <laughs> we, did, we did our Lee Frazier uh, thriller in Manila, I think, right? And the man he unseated, Vernon Forrest. I believe we did Thriller in the Middle, but there's a couple of Ali fights we didn't do. We didn't do the one at Yankee Stadium. Um, I'm trying to find out from Benny, was he joking with the Graziano and Zell? And Lennox Lewis, in spite of himself, has a successful defense of his heavyweight fight. And you know I'm happy because this guy showed he's got heart, he's tough. He can come back, but you blow your eye. That's the end of it. You can look for it, Benny. If not, get, give me a second option. And if it, you don't have one, we'll go to. Oh, they stopped it? Yeah. Hold on. Sorry. I'm sorry. I got to go back. Among the stories, a continuing saga. One year after Ted Williams' death, the controversy surrounding the freezing of his body continues. Each Friday night, look for On the Record with Bob Costas. Bob guests on this week's show 
include 300 game winner Roger Clemens and Arnold Schwarzenegger. July 12, World Championship Boxing returns with a rematch between welterweight champion Ricardo Mayorga and the man he unseated, Vernon Forrest. Also that night, Zab Judah faces Demarcus Corley. Top top. And they're stopping yeah. the fight. They're stopping the fight as we get out of this promo to tell you that the fight Guys, stick in the started. chat if you like. I mean, unless you have something to do. And stick Lennox around. Lewis, in spite of himself, has a successful defense. Shoot the breeze a little you bit. If you, if you have time, if not, you do it together. All, he's tough. He can come back. But you blow your eyes. I had clip, we all had clips go up, but... That was a long awaited. They should have done that a little earlier. Yeah. You, you think we can blame the ref for stopping that? Let's, um... Why? Why did he stop the fight? Why? The 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 cut was the same. <laughs> the cut was the same in the third round as it was, was in that round. There was no heavy blood coming into his eye. If he wanted to stop the fight, then he should have stopped the fight when he got cut initially. No, he lets him go out there a few more rounds. He risks his health, and then he stops the fight anyway. You know. So I mean, I th that's a ridiculous stoppage. This is a heavyweight championship fight. I, I believe, um, not, you know, if we disagree, we disagree. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. It shouldn't have been stopped. I know the eye was bad, but it wasn't, it wasn't impeding him from fighting. And, and he was actually up in the fight and they seem to have as bad as that cut was, they were controlling it in between rounds. Right, and it wasn't, and when he, during the rounds, he, he wasn't bleeding into his eye heavy. It was coming down across his eyelid and then coming down the side of his face, but it wasn't pouring into his eye. But when he first got, I mean, okay, it's a bad cut. But if you're going to stop the fight, stop the fight there. Don't let the guy fight three rounds more and the cut is still the same. There's not this, not a, a big amount of blood. And then you you throw his you know his chance for the championship out the window by making a ridiculous stoppage like that. And that's what these referees do. Some of them they want to become a part of the fight. You know when you're not, you're just there to referee the fight. So that that's I, the way I felt about that. As you, as you can see, I'm holding the mic in my hand because I'm ready to throw something at that stoppage. I, I cannot. I'm not going to throw the mic. I'm okay. I'm in a safe place. I don't want anybody to think I'm going to do anything silly here, but that was a bad stoppage. Bucky, who I know knows his stuff, like a lot of guys in here, Dave, Benny, I mean, everybody in here knows their stuff. Bucky is saying, Timmy, can you read the chat? No, no. Okay. He's saying Klitschko's cut man, Souza, said Sousa, that that fight me. should have never been stopped. Right. Uh, you know, and that, that was coming from the cut man. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, if, yeah, listen, did, if if the blood, uh, it's a bad cut. There's no denying no, that. Nobody's denying it. But if the blood is not pouring into his eye, if the blood, he can't stop the blood. You get to that, Dave. Then you stop the fight right there because you can't stop the bleeding. And if it keeps going like that, he's not going to be mm -hmm. able to see. And then, you know, you risk his health. But this is, a, this is one of the. All right. I got, two, I got two very. Um, important ones um our cin cinnamon girl i'm telling you she's like a veteran now she said sure looks like a fix girl, well <laughs> very well said I the don't only know. thing i'll say about that it's one thing to know something it's another thing to prove it yeah well it, whatever it, it's just a bad stop it's a ref you know whatever he did he did we'll blame it on him um dave t He's got a little different issue here. Dave says, "I he agrees that it should have been stopped, but he got under it too. So it wasn't just the top. He was ripped up on the here. I believe Dave is saying we could go back that and look does at it. it. That, that has, it does, from the eyes down, your face could be hanging off. Yes, that, that, that has nothing to do with it. He The other cut over here was below his eye. Right, so he's so going to bleed down. It could bleed all at once. You know what I mean? It's not going to impair the vision. This is fighting. You know, you're going to get cut. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to get your eyes busted open. But when the referee decides to take him upon himself and decide to fight, that's what I have a problem with, you know, because you're cheating the fighter. You know, that's the way I look at it. I, I want to know um, if you remember this, because I remember watching this and going, 
I became a Tyson Fury fan for some other reasons, and I started to like Tyson Fury. And I remember this fight against Wallen, and Bucky's saying it beautifully. Um, he remembers when um, Fury was cut really bad against Wallen in two spots, and it wasn't even being close to being stopped. And those were bad cuts. I do remember it. And I remember, I don't remember, I don't think he had Stitch in his corner. He had somebody else. But he had two bad cuts, and they were looking, but you had that wilder payday coming up. There was no way I believed that they were going to stop that fight, no matter what. Now, I could be wrong. Timmy, give me a little take on that. Well, I really can't because uh, I don't watch Tyson Fury's fights. I never have. Okay. Can you please I, tell me saw, what? Can you share this with us? I I saw part of the Klitschko fight that he won. Mm -hmm. But uh, what people make him into, I, I, I told you that before. I, I don't see it. All right. I don't see it. If he's such a tough guy, he makes himself out to be, then let's get in the ring and fight Anthony Joshua. Well, Let's fight a guy that can move and punch at the same I, time. I, I would like to say something to you now that you've said that. Um, my One of my sons, I think it might have been Antonio or my son Vincent called me and told me that he's not going to fight Usyk. Him and Joshua are going to fight. Is that accurate? I, I, don't, I, I thought that the Usyk fight was signed. Somehow he, he won't. He I, I thought it was signed. I, and, I, I, and I'll tell you why I thought it was signed. That's why I thought uh, Joshua took the Nagano, the Francis uh, Nagano fight, because the uh, Usyk already had signed the, uh, back a few months ago with right. Fury. But I did see the other day Fury said he didn't want to fight. I have nothing against Tyson Fury. He's just not my idea of what a heavyweight is or a heavyweight champion okay. is. That's all. That's all right. No, I thought it was something personal because I was going to say. If he's not a friend of yours, he can't be a friend of mine. I can't remember. Well, no, he's, I'm pretty sure. Listen, uh, he's Irish. I'm Irish. You know, we're both thick-headed. And I just don't like the way he goes about things. I don't like the way his father goes about things. And that's just my opinion. That's all. You know, a lot of people love him. A lot of people say, oh, this, that, and that. But I told you straight up, I, I don't see what these people are talking about, you know. And I'll tell you something about Tyson Fury and his big mouth. He wouldn't last in the 1980s. <laughs> he wouldn't have survived, you know. He talks about Tyson and, you know, Larry Holmes. I mean, so many guys were really good in that era, and he acts like he's among them, you know. And I say, what have you done to elevate yourself amongst it, to make yourself among these great fighters, you know? You, you, you know what? And that's that's the, the old argument of I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. What I'm saying is, that's what makes it so difficult to argue errors um, because, right, right. you know, like like the old, well, the 85 Bears were the best defense ever. Right. I'll just say, what if I think the 2000 Ravens were better? What if I, and, and, and I'm not saying it, it's just um, hypothetically. What if I tell you I think the 76, 78, and 79 Steelers that didn't win were better. You know, you know, I mean, it's just subject to an opinion. But I will say this about what you said. And I felt this way about Vladimir, uh, by, uh, Vladimir Klitschko. He held on to that title for so many years because there was nobody to fight. Zero. Right. The talent so, wasn't there. Right. So, but, but is it his fault? that there's nobody to fight. He's just beating whoever they put in front of him. Now, um, what I'm saying is, is, is it, understand where I'm going here, is it Fury's fault that he's fighting whatever's in no. front of him? No, of course not. Right. It doesn't but mean you got to like his style and his showboat and shit. I don't like that either. You know, I, you know yeah. who I, guys I like. Here, here's the problem with a guy like Tyson Fury and – uh guy like no, Floyd Mayweather, if I say to everybody say there, if I was to say Craig Gatto was a great baseball player, he did this, he did this, he did everybody that. Everybody that knows me would say, no, he sucked. Listen, I could say that, but
but you can't say that. Right. It's not for you to say. I if understand. you're great at something, it's for the people to Absolutely. say that about you. And like these guys, they say that about themselves, and I stand there wow. laughing. You know, you, you're not supposed to. If if Floyd Mayweather was the best, people know the fight game. Then they would say he was the best. He's far from the best. You, you know you, what I mean? You know Just what? Just like Tyson Fury is far from the best heavyweight ever. You know what? Um, I'm glad we're getting into this Fury thing, but it brings me to the intro. Um, <laughs> as everybody knows, I like to try. Oh, to wait. Before we get to that, okay. I wanted to tell you, um, remember what we said about Dundee and his name? Okay. So in reading the history of boxing, uh, back in the, like the turn of the century, I'd say up into the 40s, maybe the 30s, late 30s, the Irish controlled the boxing game. So a lot of Italian guys were shut out. And it's not just in boxing. It was in work, too. Absolutely. Okay? I knew the about Italian it. guys, it's you know, that labored and whatever, they couldn't get Absolutely. on the job. And, you know, Italians have distinctive names, and so most, a lot of Irish do, yeah. you know. So a lot of guys changed their name. And that was the case of uh, Angelo Dundee's older brother, Chris. Okay, in order to get into the boxing game, there's two uh, street guys, two brothers from the Bronx, uh, Tommy Eberly and uh, his brother, Patsy. Now, Tommy was a fighter. He couldn't get into the <laughs> fight game. You know, he changed his name to Tommy Ryan. And there's so many other fighters like Willie Pep. His name is uh, Guillermo Papaleo. Um, Joey Maxim, his name is Giuseppe Bertinelli. Joey Giardelli, his real name is Raymond Paul Talili. And even the black guys changed their name to get into the game. Ray Robinson is Walker Smith. Okay. Uh, Joe Walcott is uh, Arnold Raymond Cream. So even uh, Muhammad Ali, his real name is Cassius Clay. So there's so many guys for so many reasons, but that was the reason for Dundee's brother and a lot of fighters of that era to have, you know, the Irish name so they could get the fight. And the second uh, Tommy Eberly changed his name to Tommy Ryan, within a month he had a pro fight. Absolutely. Timmy, I just want to say something. First of all, I'm gonna, I want to get to you on what you just said. Amazing. Let me say hello to my nephew, Nicholas. I love you. Great to see you here. I'm glad our mom and dad trusted you enough to come on here and listen to us. And I'm glad you're enjoying the fights. I'm sorry you missed the draft the other night, but we, we do it every week. So, Nick, always come in. You're always welcome here, buddy. Um, I want to say to you, uh, Timmy, um, about the name changing. Yeah. And so, so many um, ethnic people in a lot of ethnicities had their name changed. And I'm not going to make this about family history, but I do know um, that my last name, okay, Gatto, G-A-T-T-O. Right. Was not that. How I know that is... Um, my mother, who's inside laying down right now, um, she had to take my grandfather um, one time. You know, we were not we were babies. And the birth certificate was totally, it was a much longer name. So we went into, yeah. you know, and this came out years later. And my grandfather, he didn't, honestly, he... He grew up in an orphanage. I mean, I'm not going to get into, but right. he probably didn't even give a f about any of that. He was happy to be here, whatever. And uh, he had a very had a tough life, you know. And right. um, so, the, whatever you know, they but they changed the name. And if you go and you look at the name Gatto, there's not a lot of Gattos. Yeah, you'll find some, you know, you know, compared to some Italian names. But there's this thing, um, different towns in Italy, and believe me, I'm sorry, I don't want to bore anybody with this shit, but you brought it up. You know, many people had either their names changed for them or they changed it themselves due to whatever, yes. um, for a lot of reasons. But 
there's a lot of different derivatives from Gatto. Gattuso. Yeah. And it's all like history, like a shit I would have never known about. Gatti, G-A-T-T-I. Right. Um, uh, Della De Gatti was another one. Right. And it just kept getting shorter, shorter, shorter. Then they would take at Ellis Island, they'd fuck around. They'd take an O out, put an I there. They'll take, they'll. So a lot of people, no, they didn't, no, they didn't. Whatever. I wasn't there. I can't say I was there. But I heard this from young. Yeah. That, yeah. But right. I don't want anybody to get confused. That's my last name until somebody from Ellis Island wakes up and tells me it's different. Because there's nobody else around to tell me what the real name is. So we'll just, we'll stick with we'll stick with Gatto. You know what probably happened on Villa Avenue, the older people I used to help with the gardens, they came here as children like in the teens and the twenties. And they said that when they came through Ellis Island, that that's where uh, their name was messed up. Like one guy, his name was Scarpy. They, that, that's what they had on his papers, but his name was Scarpetti. That was his real name. So a lot of that was through ignorant people working in Ellis Island that a lot of Italian people, their names were all screwed up. Their names should begin with a T, it began with an S, you know. So that went on. So, and you know, Italian people, like all people, are proud of their last names. But I think that it was an opportunity in a new world for them, and they just went along with it. And that's really how it came to stay. And my, my friend, yeah. my personal friend, and I'll say my personal friend, Rocky Graziano, his real name is Thomas Rocco Barbella. Yep. And guy that lived next door to me on 52nd and uh, 3rd Avenue, he used to have a big fruit cart, Mr. Zampella. And I was working in construction. I was a teenager. And he called me across the street. And he said, Timmy, Timmy, I thought somebody was robbing him. So I came running. And he goes, look, there's Rocky. So I went over to Graziano. And I put my hand out. And he put his hand out. We shook hands. And he said, what does a young kid know about me? And I told him, I said, Thomas Rocco Barbella. And I didn't know it at the time. He owned the pizzeria across the street. But anyway, that day he started a friendship. But his name was changed for marketing reasons, like Rocky Marciano's was changed. Rocky, Mar uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Rocky Marciano. Marciano. His real last name is Marjano. Marjano. And I'll tell you how proud he was of his name and afraid of his dad. Marciano fought four pro fights under the name Marciano before he got up enough uh, courage to tell his dad that they changed his last name, you know, because that, that wasn't going to sit well, you know. You know, I don't want to, you know, I mean, I, I I could talk about this shit all the time. Oh, I love it, you know, but I don't want, I, I want to say this about the names and then we'll move on to something else because I want to say something um, I think we could do as a fundraiser and I think you guys will get a kick out of it because I'm game. Um, you know how they have all these YouTube boxing and, you know, fucking got, you know, forget about Jake Paul, like he got. Just regular guy, YouTubers want to just beat each other up, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm asking our our chat community of friends. Look, I have a lot of time on my hands, and I'm old, but I got a lot of. I'm bitter about a lot of things from the past, so I would love to, at 57. Box another YouTuber, and we'll give the money to charity. Timmy, you can work the corner. We'll have Davey T come in from Boston. We'll have Bucky work the Benny or whoever. We get three people work the corner. And I know if all shit, if all else fails, there's going to be a melee in the ring with all our supporters anyway. I, I saw. Think, I think. I saw. I think it was Benny. What he said. He, he put in the chat. Um, uh, Graziano. Uh, Zale, Tony Zale. Right. But there's another guy. There's another guy changed his, his name. Tony Zale is uh Anthony Florian Zaleski is his real name. All right. You know you know the amazing what? thing about him, besides being a great fighter and a great athlete, do you know he ran a six a twenty-six mile marathon till he was in his eighties? Every year, once a year he would run it. 
Tony Zell? Yeah, yeah, Tony Zell. But he put it in the chat. And my question is, what fight do you want to see? Well, do you, want to, you, you know, because I'm, I'm the, I can tell you right now if we can get, let's find out if we could do Zell. Let's do it right now because I don't know if there'll be video on, on Zell. Well, I think there would be, but here's the deal with that. You have to think, you know, how many people are going to want to watch it in uh, black and white because it's All in right. black and white. All right. How about this? How about yeah. this? Only because, you know, I don't want people to think, you know, me and Benny have a a, a, a special bond being uh, brother-in-laws and whatnot and being through a lot together as young men. Um, Bucky, now, it, it is because this is a great fight. Um, but we'll, we'll get to everybody's fight. We're, we're yeah, not going to let you down. I don't, don't want to see. It, I don't want to hurt nobody. All no, these we're not going to let nobody down. If you want to see the fight, it may not be next week, but we're going to show the fight. If All you right, want to so see, we'll definitely show the fight. Here's what's being asked for right now. We got Graziano Zell. We right. got Holmes and Tyson, and we wow. got Kovalov and Ward one. Great fucking fight. That was a light heavyweight fight. I believe so, yep. Yeah. Andre Ward, a special fight, a pound for pound. I was going to say something about my man, Joe Calzaghe, but I'll let it go. What? Go ahead. I like I Joe Calzaghe. I know, because we were talking about Fury, and and there's something that had to do with European, and I'll never forget everybody saying he had no shot with Roy Jones, and I got to tell you, I had not seen enough of Calzaghe at that point. Now was the big knock. Everything is against Europeans and this and that. He put on a clinic against a still great Roy Jones. Maybe not, yeah. you know, when Roy was punching guys behind the back and doing crazy shit. But he beat a good Roy Jones. Well, I thought that Calzaghe gave him a boxing clinic. I love Joe Calzaghe. One of the most Cal underrated champions of all time. And Calzaghe was one of the most disciplined fighters of all time. He, I, if I remember, I think his dad his trained and managed him. But, yeah, yeah Calzaghe could really, really box. And back then, everybody wanted the guy with the big punch. You know, that's I'll what sells you, the tickets. But he was excellent, Calzaghe. I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little nugget. You dropped so many nuggets, and, and it's only because I – I like Joe Calzaghe. It had nothing to do with him having uh, coming in with the Sardinian flag and or the Welsh flag and the Italian flag. Had nothing right. to do with. All right, it had something to do with him being Italian. All right, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, let's let's not act like we didn't fucking root for the Irish guys. Root for yeah. I mean, we all know that. All right. So, anyways, but I couldn't believe how great he boxed. But I, I his father's story was even. What blew me away, the man was a musician. He was a musician, Joe Calzaghe's dad. Okay. And, and Joe Calzaghe's nickname was, uh, he had a nickname, uh, uh, anyway. And he said he was used to train his son and tell him, boxing is like music. And, and he explained what he meant. It's got to be sweet. It's got to, it's got to. It's got to, you got to be, you got to know when to have low tones and high. And I was like, what the fuck? And then yeah, it's rhythm. It's it, all about it, rhythm. Right. Rhythm. And, and I think his dad, I forget the instrument. Somebody could look it up. He played not like your basic instrument. Um, and he was like a phenomenal, but he enjoyed training his son. And it was about the music, what he played. He wanted it to, he took that and trained him to fight like everything was in rhythm and right. smooth and in and out and everything right. was about movement and right. everything. And I get, I got it. I got it. So, but I don't want no, how about Rocky versus Club Lang? That would be a good one. Ben, Ben, that's a good one, especially that I played that fucking ridiculous song, but I wanted to make these try to get a laugh. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stump Timmy because 
What? Lisa, you got it. We did Ollie Frazier three, Thriller in Manila, but we could we can do Ollie Frazier. We could do them all. We'll get to them. You got it. Um Timmy. Yeah. I am gonna make I know you know your shit with boxing, like I know it, like crazy. It's gonna be hard to stump you. So the only way I think I can stump you might have to be not with a boxer. That was it it'll have to be yeah, it'll be a boxer. I won't go MMA. I know you know that too. But I'm going to go with like maybe one who trained him or something like that. Because I okay. know you know the trainers too. It's not, hard to not all of them. There's a load of them. Not all of them. There's a lot. So, so were you name, able to name everybody in that intro I put up today? Because I changed it totally. Well, there's uh, a bunch of good ones. In quickly, there. I think the only guy probably was the last guy. I didn't really see his face. There's uh, the two guys the in the one, picture. Who, the one with Teddy Atlas? Yeah, yeah. I didn't see the other guy's face. You want to see it, or do you want me to tell you who it is? Yeah, let me see it. Let me see if I know who it is. Guys, I hope you don't mind. We're going to go back to the videotape to see who was in there. I'm, uh, if I don't know the guy, I'm not, I'm not ashamed oh, no, to tell you, know you I don't know him. You know him. You know him. He was a champion, and he had some wars, and Teddy had him at, I don't want to say too much because you'll know it, but he went to Teddy and said, I need you, and got rid of his own dad. Tim Bradley. Timothy Bradley? Yep. Oh, he's a good fighter, Timothy Bradley. And he went to Teddy at the end, remember? No, not really. Yeah, he used Teddy for like his last... Timothy Bradley's father used to train him. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he went He went to Teddy at the end, and he, he wanted Teddy to work with him against... It was against Pacquiao, but he fought him... Um, he fought him... He used him for somebody else too. They walked right through who he, who he was. He was a good fighter. Yeah. And then um, he came up short against Pacquiao, but Teddy loved him. He said, Everything I asked this kid to do, he did. Animal. Hardest. I like uh, I like Teddy Atlas. I love him. Teddy you know, Atlas. Not a, what a Stomato fighter. Yeah. But they kind of overplay his role when it comes to Tyson. Mike Tyson was Custom Models fighter. Teddy Absolutely. Was in there for a while, he was training him. When Cus passed away, Mike Tyson was Kevin Rooney's fighter. Yeah, not Teddy Atlas's fighter. I just, I just watched. Um, you know, I, I love Teddy, and I, I, you know, we talked about this, but yeah. Um, and I, I'll, you know, I'll leave it for another time. You know, being, I don't want to say fortunate enough, but I got to like Teddy Atlas, the person, the human being, because he he talked to me on a level. That was yes. amazing. It's a regular then, guy. Yeah, yeah. And he, most fighters he, are. Most fighters are regular guys. And, he, and he, he cared about a situation that I was going through with a right. young yes. child. So, yeah, that Very was first. Family time. oriented. At I immediately liked him, and the production crew was gone, and he's still talking to me. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. But I'll say this about Teddy. Besides, you know, I won't get into any of this stuff, but. I didn't know. I knew a lot of what happened, but the guy asked him, um, how did it feel to be betrayed by Customato when he chose Mike Tyson over you? That's really what happened. He said, um, his answer was, was amazing because he's truthful. He said, you know, it took me to a place that I needed to go. To see if I'm that tough guy. Because everything Cuss taught me was opposite of what he did. Betrayal. Yeah. Loyalty. Right. But 
I understand it now because Cuss needed before he died to have another heavyweight. And he knew he had a champ. And he accepted it. He goes, I accept it now. I, it took a long time for me to get it. But you know what? I got it. He goes, you know, and the guy was like, Kind of, kind of sounds like me, you know, like you're giving him an out, not a giving him an out, but Teddy explained it so well that you could have looked at it that way. He used it more as not, not for years. He didn't. It was the betrayal and loyalty. He was heartbroken, heartbroken, um, because of what he did, and he still chose him. But right. the way he said it was so like deep like you'd really have to truly it tested him as a man yes. to be betrayed like that when he loved that man so much cuss yes and when cuss picked mike over him after he would tell him for years you're the greatest teddy you're the greatest you're going to be this and that and he made teddy stop fighting for selfish reasons so he could train because he said he saw something in him. Teddy said, I don't know if I would have ever been a champ or this or that, but I could fight. I could box. I'm not, And I stopped because he asked me to. And I said to him, why? I need you here at the gym. Cus was already getting sick, and he needed yeah. somebody to run the gym. So they took the gym from nobody coming to the gym. Teddy takes over the gym, meaning he's the guy now, the main trainer. And now you got 30, 40 guys coming in. And I didn't know how close he was with Kevin Rooney. I never knew that. Yes. When Teddy gets, when Cuss, you know, they have their split, he gets rid of Teddy. He said he was happy that his dear friend, Kevin Rooney, he knew, he knew Mike would be in a good place. Yes. With yes. Kevin. And it showed. And Cuss got what he wanted, but... I wonder if Cus ever had to look himself in the mirror and say, look what I did to this fucking kid, you know? Yeah. And well, Teddy had a lot of anger and violence in him, too. He wasn't yeah. brought up around sandbags. He was brought up around, you know, well, men. I think by Cus making the wrong decision there. Wow, great okay. job, Bucky. Thank you. Bucky said Atlas trained Kevin Rooney when he was young. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Bucky. Rooney, Rooney was like the younger brother. Yeah, I never knew they had that. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know the yeah, relationship. They were at camp. They they lived up there in the oh, Catskills. Yeah. And he mentioned the police station, uh, Timmy. What you told me? He mentioned the police station, like you've been telling me. <laughs> I don't even want to go down that road, but I was going to do something really funny tonight and put it in the the thing. I was going to put a boxer from my neighborhood in there. It's just something I told you that you never forget. You, you would know because you're never going to see. A boxing gym in a place like that in the right. rest of your life. So that's why it's impressionable. But uh, back back to uh, what uh, happened to Teddy Atlas. Does anybody want to see a Vinnie Madalone fight? We can do that. Well, uh, we, can do, we can do Madalone Holyfield. Thomas, I think the, the road, best. Now. We'll do it down the road. Uh, the best fight, Madalone Matt is a Queens guy. I like Vinnie Madalone. Um, the best nice fight. Guy. Good guy. My daughter's. I don't know if the guy likes it, but I thought a great fight. He he was pretty good in was uh he's a tough guy, Vinny Madalone. Vinny's good. Uh, Adamic, Vinny. Thomas Adamic. That was a good fight. <laughs> my daughter's twenty first birthday. Vinny had a lounge in Whitestone. It's called Whitestone Village in Queens. Okay. And uh it was a little lounge, food, bar type thing. And uh, I think it was my daughter's 21st. We had a little something. And uh, it was in Vinny's place. And all the kids, he, he loved the kids. He's uh, just a down-to-earth kind of guy. And, you know, he he caught up in some things. But uh, just a, a real dude. A real dude. Not a fucking, didn't think he was a movie star. Right, right. You know, he just didn't. So, uh, but whatever. That's neither here nor there. But Madelon was, he was a good heavy. Hey, he guy was. from the neighborhood. Hey, listen. 
He lost the holy field, but I got to tell you one thing. He fucking went for it. He went for it. Well, I, I listen, I thought he was lucky to get that fight. Absolutely. But at least but he went think, for it. How many guys would lay down? But I didn't think he was ranked that high enough to get a fight like that. You yeah, know, at the time. Well, yeah, well, yeah. But he was, uh, you know, another guy, he's from Buffalo. He got hurt. He's okay now, but uh, he was an up and coming heavyweight. Uh, Baby Joe Messi. Tell and me about Messi, uh, in a fight, uh, I think the guy's name was Marcus Williams. He punches, he kept punching the kid behind the head. And then he knocked him down. He walked up, he cracked him right in the, you know, in the skull of his head, a little below his skull towards his neck. So after the fight, his brain was bleeding. So... He had a subdural hematoma, but his happened on the outside where the vessels broke. So many vessels were broken and they started bleeding, but it was nowhere next to his brain. So, and what happens over time, it just dissipates. And I guess uh, your body repairs the vessels and all that. So he was okay. So I was watching him with his dad. And, you know, I thought he got a good break because he got, you know, I mean, he looked comatose for a while there. And now he wants to fight again. And when I, you see something like that, I say to myself, what do you have to prove? Wow. I understand, you know, there's a lot of money involved in stuff like that. But I saw a thing, uh, Denny Moyer and Phil Moyer, uh, Gerald McClellan. Uh, a couple other guys, they live in nursing homes. You know, I'm, telling you. I'm thinking of heavyweight that came from my neighborhood, too. I can't think of his. Damn, man. I'm in a really, like, wise-ass kind of mood. Um, a heavyweight. heavyweight that came from this neighborhood. Uh, that, oh, fuck, I'll think of the name. Um, yeah, I'll come up with the name. I, I, I'll get it. I, I'll get it. I'll remember his name. I feel so the uh, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll, I'll get it to everybody. Yeah, he's yeah, he's well known. He, uh, as a heavy, a heavyweight. Is is uh is Maddie still in the chat? Maddie is definitely in the chat. He's he asked asking about he asked about uh, Jerry Cooney. All right, but he wants to know also. Do you ever hear a Richie Kylie Kelly spelled different? No, Richie no. Kylie. Let's go no. back to Jerry Cooney because Matt's been breaking my balls about doing a Cooney fight, and I told him uh, which one, Norton or Holmes. But anyway, let's see if we can see what he said about Cooney. Um, well, I think he was talking about him being a straight-up fighter. There it is. Timmy, I always said Jerry Cooney's downfall was spinally his legs, his right leg to be exact. If the oak tree has a skinny trunk, it will fall in a storm. Would have had Cooney doing. Oh, he's saying he would have had him work on his lower body with weights and whatnot to get stronger. As the boxing guy, Timmy, training, being in the gym, would have that made? I mean, I mean, we could all say you know everything starts with your your core and your legs equate to everything. Do you think that would have changed who Jerry Cooney was in the ring? Absolutely, hundred percent. Wow. He, uh he was a straight up fighter. Big and big I, big. I could not for the life of me. I'm tall. But in order to get something behind a punch when you're a big tall thin guy with a long range, you know, you have to bend your knees and Matty's right. He and here's something, Matt, too, about Cooney. A lot of people don't know. Cooney's a southpaw. They turned him around. That's why that left hand was so devastating. You know, I, and the reason I remember that is because my younger brother, the same thing. He was a southpaw and he turned around. So his power hand was his first, you know, his first shot. His jab was actually his power hand. But <clears throat> if I ever saw Jerry Cooney again, I would ask Jerry if he had a chance to do it all over again, would he get rid of Victor Valley? Victor Valley me. had no business training a heavyweight contender. Yeah. He had Victor Valley, Rappaport. Who else did he have? Well, um, Rappaport was the manager. And, uh, who was the other guy uh, next to Dennis, Valley? Dennis something. Dennis. I remember. There was a third I, guy involved. 
Yeah, it made me. I gotta tell you, I wrote. Of course, we all wrote it for Cooney and New York guy, all of that. And I'll never forget that Holmes fight. Oh, I thought he. I thought he. He was in that fight, and he well, had moments he, where he, he hurt. He was, him. but he. See, the reason I would ask him if he would get Dennis rid of Rappaport. Is that him? Right. Yes, Bucky. I said Dennis. Adam Dennis Boy, Rappaport. Bro. Thank yes, God you came tonight, Bucky boy. Yeah. Good man. Um, when Cooney got hit. He had no defense. He, yeah. I, I'm not saying it to him. That why you think Victor Valley shouldn't have been with him? Absolutely not. He why put he his hand, He put his when when he get used to get hit. He put his hands up like a girl. When you <laughs> get hit, you hook the guy. You you step into him and you hook him. You know to get him close to you. And he didn't know how to do that. And <clears throat> when he was fighting Foreman, Gil Clancy was in his corner. And the first time Foreman popped him, he grabbed him. Something simple. It's something basic in, that every fighter learns as a young fighter was when you get tagged and, you know, you're on Queer Street. You you're grab on, him and you hold on like you're sinking in the water and he's the only thing holding you up. And Cooney couldn't do that. Now, I'm not saying that that's something that he should have known. That's something if you don't know, you're not going to survive. You, you know, mm -hmm. When somebody catches you good and you can't hold on, and that's what happened to Cooney. But I agree with Matt, his legs and all that. And that's why that left hand, though, was so powerful because of the way they turned him around. You know? of, yeah, a lot of talk. You know, he, wow, he was a tough kid. He used that jab good. If he jabbed off that, you know, he was good at jabbing and then hooking off the jab, which is very difficult to I'll do. Never, it takes a long time to learn, you know. I'll never forget what he did. It, it actually, I rooted for him, of course, but it bothered me what he did to Ken Norton. Oh, that was sickening. Yeah, yeah. In, oh. uh, well, that was I the mean, first round. The game. It's a game. I got it. I got it. But the way he sat and took that hook, he sat in that corner. And, you know, we could show it. Maybe we'll do, like, greatest knockouts or whatever. I mean, that left – he was, like, squatting and fucking – wow. I, I still remember the shot. Yeah. If yeah. you guys want, I, I don't care. If you want to stick around, we'll pull up a highlight reel of greatest knockouts. I don't give a shit. I got yeah. time for you guys. All we could do it another night. We could do some of the greatest hockey melees of all time. Uh, anything that has to do with throwing hands, everybody seems to enjoy. We're, by the way, let me give everybody an update on the MMA stuff. We are trying, as Timmy knows and some others, very hard to do a lot of MMA stuff for, for many reasons. Not only are they great uh, fights and, and there's so much going on, um, there's a lot to to be explained, like as Timmy drops all amazing nuggets and Bucky and everybody else who contributes. Everybody contributes in their own way. Um, but we are it is such a big issue with the UFC, PFL, Bellator. The UFC owns all the old pride stuff. They own just about Everything outside of who I've told you we believe one FC is as we that we could save that argument for another day. But they they we watch a lot of one championship and they're based out of uh, Singapore. Anyway, right now the best we could do we could only use UFC clips in three second intervals. It is almost impossible. We've tried. Wait, listen, forget about the editing part of it. I don't give a shit. I'll, I'll do it. It's it's in. We would have to do it from a standpoint of you got to watch a three second clip, maybe see somebody get put in a guillotine, or watch a punch get landed, or get hit with a question mark kick, and then somebody will explain why that happened. Then we'll go back to a clip. It's con it, it it's it won't be a flowing thing, or we're gonna get it shut down again. Anything more than three seconds, done. 
that even UFC fighters that have channels, they can't go more than, they, watch them, they cannot go more than three seconds. Anybody that breaks down MMA in any way, no more than three seconds. WWE is the same thing. I have no, uh, I'm not going to put on Jimmy Superfly Snooker anyway, but uh, we couldn't use uh, WWE footage either. Timmy, from my father, always said Cooney should have stayed a southpaw. Good nuggets, uh, Bucky. I love this. I got a, I got a question for Bucky in the chat. Go ahead. Ask him. There's a, there's a record in boxing that's equivalent to uh, Joe DiMaggio's record in uh, baseball, the 50 game, uh, 56 game hitting streak, which nobody will ever break that record. In boxing, there was a fighter, the first 32 fights he had, he won by knockout. Can you name that fighter? And can you name the legendary fighter that defeated him to end his KO winning streak? Can I get a hint? Okay. The guy that ended, it was a 126-pound fight. I was going to ask you the years, like in what era. That's all. Uh, In the 1970s. I, late, I late, an, late night. Okay, all right. Yeah, I have an excuse. The fighter, the fighter is Wilfred Gomez. Oh, okay. Well, I had an excuse. Thirty-two oh. fights, thirty-two knockouts. Can you name the guy who stopped his undefeated streak? Wilfred one of the greatest, one of the Wilfred greatest Wilfred featherweight Wilfred. champions of uh, ever that ever boxed. Uh, and I'll give you a clue. I'll even give you a clue. Go ahead. What country is he born in? No, I'm not that. Come on. You want me to tell you his last name? I mean, come on. Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm going to give you a clue. Go ahead. He was said to look like Popeye. At 126? Well, 122 and then 126, yeah. And he, lo- and he was sent to look like Popeye in the 70s. Full disclosure, in the 70s, depending on the year, I could be fucking as young as five. No, well, we're going to go late 70s, early okay, 80s, late 70s. Right, you got me. But, I mean, I could still watch old fights anyway. I was trying to use that as an excuse. And they said the 70s, the win streak started in the 70s. Bucky's not giving the- an answer, so everybody does, don't give it up yet because everybody wants – where you Francis said- is saying, hold on, Fran- hold on. Somebody, featherweight. And nobody cheat. Nobody go to your computers or phones. Featherweight. All right, we might have an answer. Uh, Joe Town, Jack, we got a great trivia question for you, Joe Town. Give it to Joe Town. He knows his shit. Go ahead, Timmy. You've said his name a million times. Joe Town or me? You. Wilfredo Gomez? No, you've said Gomez is the guy who had Wilfredo the record. Wilfredo Benitez? No, no. Benitez is too big. Joe Town, Jack, the question. Wilfred Gomez was 32 and 0 with 32 knockouts a record in boxing that'll never be eclipsed can you name the fighter that stopped his win streak I, yes no no way salvador sanchez you got it jack you know what joe town you know what joe town you're my man you know what <laughs> i look really bad here because i have mentioned salvador sanchez not knowing he was that freaking light that's yeah. the truth I wouldn't have thought he fought it that way. Yes. Yeah. And we just talked about, you were saying a couple weeks ago, in your opinion, he was one of the greatest fighters that ever lived. You you didn't know that they, they said he looked like Popeye with the swollen no, cheeks? No, I had no idea. I, yeah, I, when I, he I, smiled. I, and it's, yeah, I just yeah, know he's he a great fighter, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Great. Joe Town Jack comes in for two minutes. Makes makes the host look terrible, and Bucky Bucky ran on me, and they, he left me here, man. Joe Town, good looking out, buddy. <laughs> good job, Joe Town. Francis is pissed off. That was a tough one, Timmy. Give us any. Come on, a little better. Give us, that was tough. That was tough. Yeah, I'll give you some football shit. Don't get me started. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, give us a football question. Go ahead. You sure? You sure? I'm sure. All right. I know you know your shit, but. 
What if people says, come on, Craig, this ain't a football show. I'm, I'm not that good in football trivia. I'm better in baseball, but yeah, go ahead. All right, I'll give you, I'll give you, uh, I'll start you off easy. All right? Right. I'll give you a, an easy one right out of the gate. Okay. What college did Terry Bradshaw go to? It's not easy, but being on a, you know, I love the college thing and the draft stuff. So, you know, all uh, right. I don't know. I'm going to guess. Right. I'll right. guess. Yeah. I'll say Pitt. No. All right. Forget okay. it. That was hard. That was a hard question. Um, he went to Louisiana Tech. Anyway. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll give you, I'll give you an easy one. It'll be strictly about not what school they went to or anything like that. Okay. Who was the Jets running back, main running back? When they won the Super Bowl. In Boozer. Six Who? Emerson Boozer. Right. What number did he wear? 32. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Now I know I can go harder. Thank you. <laughs> now, you, now you fuck me. Now you piss me off. <laughs> Good job, buddy. All right. Um, I know. You see, now, though, you've left it open that I can nail you every time. With, tell me what school they went to. But I won't do that. Because that really, what does that mean? All right, but, well, but you know what's crazy? For some reason, I always forget that. And I, like the guy may have come from Notre Dame, and I saw him, and then ten years later, say, "What school that guy come from?" I can't remember. <laughs> so, right. You're gonna yeah. give me a, a, a ground ball here because you're good. You're good. Uh, you're a Notre Dame. What, what's your favorite college team? Notre what Dame. Yeah. All right. What number did Joe Montana wear there? Very easy. Oh, uh, three? Yes. You Joe know the Montana. first time I saw Montana? He was the third string quarterback on All Notre right. Dame. So who drafted Joe Montana? Another easy one, right? What, the Niners? Right. And where did he get traded to at the end of his career? KC. Did Joe Montana ever win? A playoff game for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, I saw them in the playoffs. Yeah. Okay. Did Joe Montana ever win an AFC championship game or go to the AFC championship with Kansas City? That I don't know. That I can't remember. But I remember seeing them in the playoffs with KC. All right. You're good. Um, I believe they went to the AFC championship game and lost to the um, – You know what? Let me shut up because I could be wrong on that one. Um, I think the, I think the Oilers beat them on the last play, and the Oilers went to the championship game. But Joe All Montana, right. I'll give you a ground ball here. Who drafted? Oh, I got Greg? a question for you. No, one more. Who 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 who, 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 who drafted Brett Favre? Green Bay. Nope. No, he. he well, I don't know then. That that I don't know. Nope. I Green. thought he was drafted by Green Bay. I know, I know people in here know it. All right, Matt challenging me here. Okay. Who went to Kent State? Jack Lambert. Next. Uh, uh, Brett Favre was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons. Oh, Bucky, my man. Bucky, help me out here. Timmy, you know, Timmy's messing with me. Go ahead, Bucky. Timmy, go ahead. I got my man Bucky back on. So if I run into trouble, I got him. He's going to help me. Go ahead. I got some strong football guys right here right now. Go ahead. What, hit me with one. What college did uh, Vince Lombardi go to? Oh, please with that. Come on. Why do you got to go back that fucking far? But I'm going to give it to you. How's that? Of course you are. <laughs> no, I'm fucking not. I'm, that's, you see, that's the poker face. I got to make you think. I'm going to take a shot here. Something's telling me Ivy League, and I'm probably wrong. Yes. I'm right, right? Yes. I don't know no, why. I'm no, 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 no. 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 Jesuits. The school was run by Jesuits. Fordham is a Jesuit school. He didn't go to Fordham. Yes, he, he did. Went to Fordham? Yeah. All right, so I'm half right. What what's his acclaim to fame at Fordham? He I, I was gonna say something really bad. Um I won't. It was gonna be like a tasteless joke. Um, he's the original, he's one of the original seven blocks of granite. Wow, uh, Sally Boy's 
My <laughs> what did you say? Lisa, who is married to Oh Sally. yeah, she got it. Lisa got it. And that's a she know well, Sal, are you giving her the answers? This is bullshit. Yeah. Sal got it. Sal no, they they, they are, you got a lot of food. All right, who kept Terry Bratcher on the bench in college? Quarterback to Terry Hanratty, I'm gonna guess. Bucky, I don't know. Am I wrong? But that was his backup on the Steelers, Hanratty. No, but I'm thinking, I don't know if he's asking me. He was sitting in college. I'm born in 67. I'm get I know he sat behind Hanratty and Joe Gilliam for a little bit. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna say Hanratty who went to where did Hanratty go? Your school. Notre, Dame. Notre Dame. Hanratty went to Notre Dame. Yeah, pig in a blanket. He was great in college, I heard. Couldn't do it in the pros. Chuck Noll didn't like uh he didn't like Bradshaw either. He didn't want to draft him. He said he couldn't spell cat if you gave him the C and the T. Let me tell you something. Terry Bradshaw, I don't care what Chuck Noll says or anybody else. Bradshaw is one of the best I ever saw. Big He's game big quarterback. Football player. Bradshaw Terry, Bradshaw, Terry Bradshaw never ran out of bounds. Terry Bradshaw took his shoulder to go for the first down. That was the type of football player he was. And that thing with Chuck Knoll calling him stupid and all that, he was a stupid guy not to realize how good Bradshaw was. And do you know Chuck Knoll, he, he was so astute, you would not expect that man to speak to his player. He was a very astute, well-read man yes. that was into – fine wine, literature. That was who Chuck Noll was outside right. of football. So when he started all of that with Bradshaw, you know, they never made up. Bradshaw never went to the funeral. No. Um, but what Bradshaw did say this about all the stupid stuff, yeah, I was stupid, this, that, and other thing. But guess what? On my tombstone, you know what it's going to say? I won four Super Bowls. Right, right, right. Two of them he was the MVP in. Just saying, I might say, you know, I don't, you know, he gets overlooked a lot. Now, if you look at his numbers, and I don't want to make this about this, you know, his his statistical numbers in a time where Pittsburgh, no team was throwing the ball. If Bradshaw threw the ball more than 20 times back in the city, that, that didn't happen. He didn't play. He played in an era where fucking receivers, it took them 10 seconds to get off the line. You know, you were allowed to do anything. So I'm not making excuses for him. It's a different game. <laughs> Well, you had you had some guys true to ball. You had uh, no, but what I'm Lamont, saying, uh, then you had Stabler. Yes, but they didn't throw the ball a lot. You ran the ball back in those days to set up the pass. Today, you you throw the ball to set up the run. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that was good. Did you see that, Joe Tom Jack? <laughs> what did Joe Tom get at me? Timmy, when I was five, I guess he's a oh, Joe Tom's a bad. Timmy, when I was five years old, I asked my father if we were Irish. He said, "Shut up and drink your whiskey." That, that was good, Jack. That, that was very good. That is beautiful. That reminds me of something when I used to drink. And that was good. Yeah, it doesn't. It didn't work for me. So, all right, I'll 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 say it this way. No, I'll say it for what it is. My father used to like to have his. There's some people in here that know. My father enjoyed his scotch and water. So, you know, he would get to the point where it was, you know, time to either go to bed or it was going to get ugly. <laughs> you understand? So, my mother used to say to him, she's inside sleeping. My father's name was Joe. Joe, I hate you when you're drinking. And he used to say, I fucking hate you when I'm not drinking. So, um, look, we're just keeping it 100 here. It's not nice, but they had a sp very special relationship. <laughs> I hate you when you're drinking. I hate you when I'm not drinking. Oh, my God. That's a great one, though. Shut up and finish your whiskey. Uh, I'm glad you like that, Joe Town. Hey, listen, my family's not. If we can't make, listen, if I can't make fun of myself or my own people, I got no right to cracking jokes on nobody else. The father on Duck Dynasty. Yeah, go ahead. Phil Robinson was the starting quarterback. Great. Bucky. I knew they were teammates. Great shit. Great stuff. 
guy from Duck Dynasty, the father, was ahead of Bradshaw at La Tech in front of him in on the depth chart, and he was the starter, and Bradshaw was the backup and in college. Great job, Bucky. Great job. Yes, my father drank doers. No, I'm sorry. It depended. If it was a good week, it was doers. I mean, he had a few, you know, they did good that week. Otherwise, it was something called back then, Duggins Do. Probably the fucking worst scotch ever. I don't know. I, I didn't drink it. I was a kid. I mean, I might have snuck a sip here and there, but there's people in this chat that are laughing. They know what he drank. And even later in Duggins Do, it was called. I don't know. Maybe nobody even heard of it. Do you ever hear of Duggins Do? Scotch? Timmy? No. No. Yeah. That's how fucking bad it must have been. And he only drank it with water. Oh, God. It was I good. drank a uh, shot of tequila. And, uh, now he drank it. Go ahead. Shot of tequila and a cold beer. That's that what I used your, to drink. That was your pleasure? That's what I liked. Yeah, I uh, I was a vodka tonic or... Headache it, City. It depended. It depended. But I was always... There was, the guys here, they're laughing. They know. I was the kind of guy when I drank, I I, I was the, I became even more fucking crazy, meaning I was the life of the party, doing crazy shit, you know, like running through restaurants, fucking, fucking with people while they're eating. No, but I thought it was funny, telling the bartender, is there somebody in here right now that knows? I thought, <laughs> you know, I thought after a while I drank that I should be the bartender, so he had to leave. <laughs> no, no, but no, we're laughing about it. I'm dead serious. All right, your shift's over. I'll, I'm going to work now. And, you know, we knew the owner. We could do whatever we want. They used to, it was a Chinese restaurant, but they were so good to us. And we, the lounge was separate from the restaurant. And then they would have karaoke night, and I'd be banged up. I would take the mic. Poor people would be waiting fucking hours to put their tickets in. They knew their song. They were never going to get the mic because I was going to do a whole concert. <laughs> Nobody ever got a chance to fucking sing. <laughs> I was, it was fucked up. But I thought it was funny, you know. I'll never forget. It, it's a, it was a good Chinese restaurant. And uh, Sal is in here. He knows. The Yankees are playing somebody in the, in the World Series. And, you know, I decide to, uh, you know, it's a restaurant. Even though we're in the lounge part, it's still a nice restaurant. And we're right. out of control. I mean, fucking out of control. And now I decide to go in there, you know, paint it up like a fucking Yankee, you know, like, oh, fuck it. Now I'm standing on the bar doing, instead of the JTS, we're doing the whole Yankee chant. It was, please stop, stop, please. You're ruining my restaurant. <laughs> Craig, please. No, I just, I, but I thought I was a fun drunk. I guess I wasn't. You know what was hard for us in the 80s? Sounds Me and my. Go. go ahead, Timmy. I had a buddy, Mike McNally, and, uh, both of us, we love uh, Celtic basketball. So we used to go, you know, around big whatever, playoff game, whatever. It had nothing to, to go. do with it. it had none. I got to ask you this. You didn't like the Celtics because of the the clover, right? Same just, reason I like uh, Notre, Dame, Notre Dame, the fight in Irish. You know, you got to stick with your heritage, you know. I respect your honesty. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, – I Me and Mike, we, we love the Celtics, and uh, we used to go to different bars. So we go to this bar, and there's this Irish guy behind the – or what else? But he's bartending. So I said to him, uh, listen, can you put the Celtic game on? They're playing in the playoffs. He looks at me, and he says, no, nah, we, we, don't, we don't watch black golf around here. So I got all crazy with the guy. So I, the owner was in the back, and I went and got the owner. And he put the I'm game sorry, on. Timmy. Dave, that's incredible that you know what the frig my old man used to drink. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, but it just goes to show you back then you couldn't get a basketball game on the TV. I and then know. like 10, 15 years later, sports bars became the thing where you could watch any game you want. And I always laugh with Mike. I said, we used to go fight with these guys to get a game on TV. And now that's the attraction to come into the bar. You know? Unbelievable. So, and that's kind of like how we felt. Like, yeah, we were out of control in this restaurant lounge. But we brought in – I mean, they, their bar business was – Sal will tell you. 
Sal, if you got any good evergreen stories, they don't have to be about me being a fucking retard, but, and I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that word politically, but I was acting, you know, I was crazy. It doesn't have to be about me. If you got any good memories of some of the good times or, or heart attacks I gave people, go ahead, share it. I don't give a shit. Um, what do you mean by San Diego? And my old man's name was Joe. Are you kidding me, Dave? I come from, you know, as, uh, you know, us Italians, you know, everybody is named after somebody. I got fucked. I got, I got totally robbed. Uh, now, now, I want you to get this, Davey, and everybody in the chat who can understand this. Timmy, you'll, you'll understand it. Here I am with a last name, Gatto, going to school in the 70s with a first name, Craig. You imagine having to deal with that? And believe me, I can't tell you how many times I was told, you're a Titan with a name like Craig? Actually, I, I yeah, and and I, 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 to this day, it's still not a popular fucking name. Fucking Craig, it's Scottish. I'm not, I no problem with the Scott, but where did the Scottish thing come from? And if I told you my middle name, it's even fucking worse. But I could live with that a little bit. Now you just want to know, and I'm going to tell you. But it's named after somebody. And I found that out years later because I, I, I used to tell my father, how the hell? My brother Joey, my father's a Joe, my grandfather's a Joe. You know, it, you're basic Italian. Like, what happened to fucking Michael or Anthony or something? Like, my children, whatever, Vincent. Antonio, Elizabeth is my daughter. Now, Craig Jr., he got screwed like me, you know, because my wife wanted to name him Craig. But if, if I tell you my middle name, Timmy, I, I don't want to, I don't want to hear that laugh because I know I'm going to hear it. I know you're dying to hear it. Well, it's got to be just as good as the storm. So go ahead. Uh, oh, you got that? Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So now I got to give it to you. My middle, but you, you got to let me explain why it is what it is because it doesn't go. It's because your old man gave it to you. <laughs> well, no, my old man was probably out when she gave it to me. But anyway. Well, your mom. <laughs> well, either he was out cold or he was out. Um, <laughs> yeah. Long story short, God rest his soul. My name is Craig Darren Gatto. I said to somebody I hadn't seen my whole life. Why the hell would you ever name me that? I did. And she, her answer to me was, well, Craig, it was such a different and beautiful name in 1967. And Darren is because I love Bobby Darren. <laughs> name me his real fucking last name. I would have took that more than Darren. Well, if Bobby Darren's real last name was not, as you know, it was different. Darren's Bobby Darren's last name was some fucking long. Right, fucking yeah, name. that was his stage name. Yeah, uh, yeah, right, yeah so yeah. I got I to gotta live with that. I can't even do Mac the Knife in karaoke. You got to give me that name? Mac the Knife, yeah. yeah I love now, that song. And if anybody puts Darren in the chat, you know what? From now on, I want, yeah, you know what? We're going to change my moniker. But I'm that was popular back then. What? Darren. Not in Italian. Not in the not, not in there, bud. No, when I went to Catholic yeah. school, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of uh, not, and not only white guys, black guys too, Darren. A lot of a yeah. lot of guys. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's why uh, Darren from Bewitched. All right, you know, here come the jokes now. Maddie's starting his shit. Hey, listen, Maddie. First of all, my middle name is spelled with one R. How do you like that? My mother didn't even know how to spell. But anyway, no, I'm like, my middle name is spelled D A R I N. Right, right. Just to let you know. I mean, I didn't know that. I never used it. I still don't use it. I just thought I'd make, give you guys a cheap laugh. I had a brother, Joey Jr., me and Dave. Jesus. Wow, Dave, that's crazy. Dave, are you sure you're not like related to me? We might, Dave, we could be family and you don't even know it. Well, yeah, everybody was, uh, in my family, it was all Joes in, uh, in Sal's family. There was a lot of Sal's. I mean, so many Salvatore's, so many, 
so many. And you know, you know what's it, funny about you talking about your name? I had so many fights because of my first oh, name. Cinnamon you know, girl sticking up for me. Had a girl. But she I said, did. People used right to mess with me. They she used said, to, like, I hate that dog, Lassie. They used to come up to me and they used to say to me, hey, Timmy, how's Lassie? Or, you know, Timmy from, uh, you know, Christmas time, little Tim, all that, you know, so Tiny Tim, all this stuff. So I started cracking guys, you know. So one day I got in trouble. I was sitting in the room and my old man came in and he said to me, what's the matter? And I said, oh, I had a fight. He said, well, you have a fight. I said, because they keep teasing me about my first name. And then he looked at me, he said something. I said to him, that's your fault. He looked at me, he said, my fault. I said, yeah, you gave me the name. I said, look at the size of me, Pop. You gave me a little boy's name. And they're, they're making fun of me. Do you know from that day on till the day he died, my father called me Luke. He never called me Timmy again. <laughs> that's fucking great. Are you kidding me? That oh, I used to have two, three fights a day with that. That's now why I hate that dog. <laughs> but I got to play with Timmy. I wish I would have got Luke. I would have. I would have took Luke in a minute. I would have took Timmy in a minute. No, but my dad's name is Jack. My other brother's name is Joe. My other brother's name is Maddie. You got I'm Timothy. the biggest out of all of them, and I had a little boy's name. And I was like, "Why didn't you give me Jack? Why didn't you name me Jack?" You know, and it was just try a being, kid. Yeah, try being a wise guy, even fucking Craig Darren. Nobody knew about the Darren part. And thank God not many call me Craig. Well, uh, yeah, they call me Craig, but whatever. Um, you know, Matt, don't make me start getting into your name because I know some of your personal secrets here. <laughs> but Sal's, talk Sal's talking about, um, I think he's saying I might have went wild in Evergreen during the Yankees and San Diego World Series days. No, I, I remember been, that. I might have been out of that night. I might have been. I don't remember. That was always a good excuse any anyway. I don't remember. I'm so sorry. I don't know if I did anything silly that night, but uh, I hope I was able to uh, say I, I apologize if I did. No, we had a good time. Everybody loved everybody there. It was like I wasn't a, a, like I didn't watch that show Friends. Like I, I really didn't, but I knew what it was about and stuff. But and I'm not going to say that was that kind of place. But everybody did know everybody in the, the in the in the place. Everybody, and as soon as I came in. Most people left, or uh, all, all they, they were no, they didn't leave. It just it, they knew like shit was gonna just oh boy, it's gonna get fucking loud in here and troll. And we would have fun just breaking balls, it wasn't like starting trouble. We would just break yeah. chops to no end. I looked up Bobby Darren, Walden yeah. Robert Casado, great work. So even better, you couldn't have how I would have took Robert. Fucking, you like Bobby Darren? Give me Robin. I'll take it. Maybe I would have had everybody in the street call me Bobby. Fucking Darren? I got to I gotta live with that? I got to live hey, with this. Craig, yesterday I told you I was on Arthur Avenue. I got a brother, David. Go ahead. You know all the famous people that came from Arthur Avenue. But did you know uh, Ann Bancroft came from uh, Arthur Avenue? You Absolutely. remember her. That's before our time, but you remember the name, right? Of course. And no clue. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. And and the other guy, too, he uh, created the atom bomb. Enrique uh, Fermi. He came from Italy, and he settled in the Arthur Avenue section. Can you imagine that? That, yes. I didn't know that, but it kind of adds up to everything that came out of Arthur Avenue, and then the fucking guy that invented the atom bomb was part of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I was like this place is heavy duty here I mean got comedians, yeah. actors, actresses oh bar god. makers wise what? guys, everything <laughs> oh my god, I gotta ask a question the guy that invented the atom bomb ends up on Arthur Avenue yeah it was either the atom bomb or the nuclear bomb but I think it was the yeah. atom bomb what bomb did they drop on Japan the atom bomb I think it was the atom bomb. Anybody in the chat help me out? Um, but it was so amazing to think that he came all the way from Italy. He settled in the Arthur Avenue section. Yeah, 
whatever it was, it was a mushroom. And in all places, you got to pick off the revenue. So he's the he's the reason why everything went fucking crazy there. But now they, there's all kinds of schools and buildings named after him and stuff. I just thought it was ironic in a, just a small area because everybody thinks that Arthur Avenue is the big Italian uh, neighborhood that doesn't come from the Bronx. But when, in fact, Morris Park is like three times or twice the size of uh, Arthur Avenue section, you know. I lived on Williams Bridge and Paulding, Williams Bridge and Sackett for a long time, for my whole for most of my time, that's where we lived. Yeah, and, and I, going, you know, going all the way across Tremont by the cemetery, you know, going eastbound all the way. That was all Italian. That's where they uh, cut the stone for the cemetery. They, you know, put the name and all that stuff over there. Those people have been there over 100 years, 150 years in that area. Absolutely. You know, um, I will say this, though, about the Arthur Avenue section for any non-New Yorkers here. I do believe this fully. And it's not that I'm being partial to the Bronx. I'm a Queens kid. But, you know, a lot of my family, the progression was you went from East Harlem, all the Italians, when they left East right. Harlem, 90% of them went to the Bronx. Yes. My aunt, too, I told you. My aunt also. So I, I Right. I had a lot of... Uh, my father's sisters went to the Bronx. For whatever reason, <laughs> we we ended up in Queens. Now, I very young, spent a little time in the Bronx. Very young, park like the Parkchester area. But anyway, and it was different back then. That area. Um, long story short, um, I will say this though. Yes, that area now, and you know this as good as anybody. It probably hasn't been what it was since, what, the mid-80s, Arthur Avenue? You know, as far as, like, the whole yes. section being a time. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. But I'll say this. For that five-block radius or whatever it is, okay, when I want, when I want, I'm not going every, anywhere else. To me, that is yes. the real Little Italy, not downtown, not Mott Street, not yes. Mulberry. I'm going right. to Arthur Avenue. Some people could make a beef, go to Brooklyn, go to Staten Island. I'll go over the bridge, go out of my way to go to Arthur. It's only a 10 minutes over the bridge anyway. I'm on the other side. Right, right. But maybe I'm partial. But there's certain, to me, that little section, I don't care how small it is, and I know it was better when it was bigger, and I, I wish it would go back to that. Not just with Italian people, just with the markets and stuff. But there's plenty there, and I would say anybody, if you're going to go to come to New York and you want to see Little Italy, go to the one in Manhattan, then go to the one up in the Bronx, and you tell me what's more authentic, what's better, who's got better food, better bakeries. I'll put Arthur Avenue up against anybody's. Yeah. You know, I don't know everybody's. I heard Boston has a real good one, too, on their North End. Well, I was up in the North End. But, uh... yeah, hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> You know what the um, owners of all the shops, you know, and they've been there generations. I One guy was telling me that the business was in the fifth generation now. But they all said the same thing. They said what keeps us alive is people like you because you people that used to come here 50 years ago when you were younger still come back today. And that's why it's still alive. I mean, there's no question in New York you Adios, you can get the best bread. Depends on which pastry shop you like, which Absolutely. restaurant you like. I mean, I love uh, Ann and Tony's, but I love Enzo's also. So, there's, you know, there's so many things there. Everybody has course, their own pleasure. Right. Everybody has I walk their own in the market, you know, I got my cap on and I, I still wear a leather jacket, you know. And the guy right away he walks right over, he hands me a cappuccino like it was, you know, I was there yesterday. Oh, well, because and it's just it's people you know, people respect and treat people like you know, men and men, and you know, not not that it's nothing criminal. It's about it is. It's about a way of a neighborhood that's still that way. Yeah, and I don't care how small it gets. For me, there's not many sections where you go to anymore where you still go one place for your cold cuts, one place for your bread, 
one place yes. for your meat. Yes. yes. You, you yeah. got to make five different stops to get everything you want. I go, I go to Title Brothers for certain olives and certain things and oil, right? I'll go to Casa de Mozzarella for mozzarella and cold cuts, or I'll go see Mike inside Dave's Deli, right, in the market. Right. I'll go to either Adio or Madonna for my olive bread. Right. And then, honestly, for pastries, my wife loves our Tussos. I'm a Sal right. and Dom's guy on Allerton Avenue. That's right. me. That doesn't mean I don't like our Tussos. I do. But for me, if I'm going to go get pastries, I'll go to Allerton Avenue, which is, you know, more but Gun Hill. I don't know what we're going to call that neighborhood. It's more Williamsburg. I don't know. Whatever. Right. It's, it's not on Arthur. But I like Sal and Dom's on Allerton Avenue for pastries. That's yeah. me. That's yeah. me. But it's still, you go one place for cold cuts, you go one place for bread, you go one place if you want to buy brajol, chopped meat, sausage, and so forth and so on. And that's what's lost, where yeah. you go one-stop shopping. That's great. I enjoy my trips there. Now, Brooklyn, I know 86th Street. I'm not a Brooklyn guy. Um, and anyway, yeah, I'm not talking about white that shit, just in general. And I used to... A frequent they had a feast a big feast every year they still do and i would only go for whatever but anyway that's all i'm saying tommy tommy i think i, I you know i always do with tom you want to come up buddy or you're not in the mood tonight because now we're talking i'm thinking about sharp provolone a loaf of olive bread fucking fresh mozzarella maybe a little i don't know i'm not big with the brujute but like a little Hot gobble bowl. I don't know. Back in the uh, back in the seventies, I had a girlfriend. She lived out in Bay Ridge. Okay, back then, yeah, no, like, beautiful. I mean, you, come on. Man. You had but, miles of uh, in Brooklyn. You had one 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 Italian community after the other, going all the way down to Gravesend, Canarsie. You know, through I, Bensonhurst, all that. That was all heavy Italian. I, I, had, a, um, I, I, ha I had his. Um, up there, uh, he, um, he's, he's actually not home right now. The, uh, he grew up, my dad and him grew up from Holland. Um, he's, and he spent a lot of time in the Bronx, but he wind up uh, spending more time in Gravesend. Right, um, right. You know, progression. Beautiful, beautiful neighborhood. Beautiful. And I used to be over on that West 8th, Whatever avenue, gorgeous area, and that feast every year, uh, Santa Rosalia, yeah. in, uh, every year they have, you know, and that's a trip, you know. It, I when I used to have to go to fucking Gravesend, it just seemed like what a drive. Yeah, well, it's right. so whatever you do, what you got to do, but but it was a beautiful feast. It was a beautiful yeah. feast, and um, but I still go to the small one in Williamsburg because. It, it, I just, there was something about the Eugilio in Williamsburg that, I don't know, it just, it was still, it's still to this day very authentic, very, um, I'm not saying I got a problem with, uh, oh, look at this, just talking about this, uh, GDM says she's getting seafood in the fish store, sausage in the pork store, that's right, GDM, bread in the, that's right, pastry from another store, now everything comes from ShopRite. <laughs> you right. know, so many people don't know that you, you there were steps, or maybe that's just how we were raised. That you went here for this, you went here for that. You went, I go to, I want chicken cutlets or sausage. I'm, I know where I'm going. Pastries, bread. I know where I'm going. You know, it, it, when it comes to restaurants, on on, we'll just use that area. All of them. Me. Right. Um, now a little partial because of my relationship with Enzo, his dad owned Dominic's. Right, right. right. So, um, I liked, at first I wasn't crazy about just sitting next to random people. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. like, you just, you, you know, there's no menus as you know, you no menu, you walk in and you're in a, you're on a bench. You could be with six, three other six people you don't know, and you know you're with your wife or whoever yeah. your kid. 
And you're not, you know, it's not like, you know, but I, like it took me a little while to get used to it until you have a stuffed artichoke and then you're able to deal with not knowing the people who are fucking to your right. And uh, right. to this day, no doubt about it. Oh, Ruby, we're talking about Dominic's. Uh, what, Ruby, I know you know we had this conversation the other night a little bit. Besides my man Enzo, if you were on Arthur Avenue and you were going to eat in a restaurant, where would you go, Ruby? Where would you like to go? Tommy, real deal. Give me the best place in Buffalo. I, I put a link, Tommy, if you want to come up or anybody else does. Joe Town. Kansas City. What are we eating? I, know, I, think, I think Joe Town's uh, out there. We're probably getting some grilled barbecue, something we can't get here. She swears by Enzo's, uh, no doubt. The best. Uh, I was partial. I used to, you know, I spent a lot of hours in there. He used to say to us, uh, or me, or whatever. You know, it got to, you know, like, I don't know. Make, what he say, what are you in the mood for? I don't know. What do you, make what you want. So he, he made us one day Pecciatelli pasta. If anybody knows, the, I, and, and I was new to it too. If anybody knows, doesn't know what the Pecciatelli is, it's a long tube like with hot sausage, hot cherry peppers, with potatoes. When I tell you it was fire, that fire meaning good, but f fucking hot. And I eat hot. I like to eat. I eat hot. But unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hot sausage with pecciatelli. And he told me why you use pecciatelli. Because you want that hot sauce and gravy, whatever. We won't get into the argument over that. To be inside the tube almost. You want so you always want when you're biting into the pasta, you want to get a little bit of the gravy to you. So you want to get the heat inside. You know what I mean? And it was delicious. Cherry pep hot cherry peppers, hot sausage, potatoes with and with pecciatelli all mixed together. Phenomenal. 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 I'll be honest with you, uh just my opinion, food wise. Enzo's is the best yeah. restaurant I ever eaten. That's a five star yeah. restaurant on Arthur Avenue. And I uh, just told the lady I want some veal and uh, pasta, and they went in and made it. I, you know, I didn't specify anything, and it was the best meal I ever had. I mean, to be honest, yeah, really. You no, know, and I, and, I, and I don't feel bad saying this because it's the truth. You know, I spent a lot of hours in Joe and Joe's too. Ruby will know, and you know Joe and Joe. On yeah. the, you know, on the service I've road. Eat, the I've eaten in Joe and Joe's. Yeah, yes. and of course, Bronx and Bobby and Anthony, beautiful people, great people, great people. And that's the first time I ever had fried dalamat, and they came out with this. And I said to Anthony, I said, this is, this is amazing, because he knew I liked a little heat. And what it was was, and he told me how they did it. They would take their, their, their like, fried Diablo sauce. Yeah. And they would put a little bit of chipotle mayo in it. It sounds disgusting. Oh, my God. It, 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 it. I'm getting hungry, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, the Galamad was incredible. When you said the Galamad, remind me of Umberto's. I, that was yeah. the first place yeah, I ever had it. On, yeah, you get the brick on the bottom. Tommy that, was a good, that was a good restaurant once upon a time, Umberto's. Upon a time, absolutely. Tommy says best Italian restaurants back in the 60s was... Round table and 31 club. Anyone who anybody important would go to those restaurants. Thank you, Tommy, for sharing that. Good stuff, man. Did you I'm, ever eat in the top of the sixes? Love you. Thanks, CDM. We talk soon. Top of the sixes. I never ate there, nor did I ever work any events there. But it was always, you know, high end from what I know. Oh, it was really nice. I I met a girl and she invited me there. She worked there. Oh, that was awesome. What a what a place. I'll tell you what was um, you know, I did and we're gonna get into it, you know, after, you know, everything ended up wind, you know, wound down with the street stuff and this, that. You know, I got I got, you know, people know, you know, people know, some people know. I got heavily involved. I had to do what I had to do to feed my family, right? You got child support, you got 
another child on the way, whatever. You do what a man does. You, you, you take care of your family. So all legitimate jobs, but so I worked from 6.30 in the morning to 2.30 in the afternoon at the hotel with the engineers, as you know. Right. Then I would leave right from there, shower in the hotel, put my suit and tie on, and work with Dora Cipriani. Now, right. I'm going to save some of it because I've been told to, because, yes, it never left me, so I didn't think Cipriani paid me well enough. So everything was a private event at Cipriani, so I'll explain maybe some night how I... I earned a lot more money than the average doorman made. Which working. location did you work? I worked both. I started it okay. right across the street from the Hyatt where I was. Yeah. You had their main, you'll call it the main 142nd and Park and Lex. But yeah. I did a, a lot of my work. I wind up being the, it was like my house, 60 Wall Street. And that's yes. where they did all their concert series yeah. for the elite. And I'm telling you, we're, we're getting. I was going to say 60 Broad Street, but yeah, right. I, they, also, they also had Windows of the World that they, okay. they had. In right, the, so Cipriani. Top, be, yeah. I was only there a couple times, but I was always 42nd Street. Right. And mostly, at, especially like the last year and a half, I was always at 60 Wall, and I made right. I made money. I made money, and I made right. I met a lot of fucking. Cool people and a lot of douchebags that people fucking look up to as movie stars or singers, whatever. You know, I don't want to, you know, they can't be here to defend themselves. But if we ever start talking about that stuff, whoever wants to know who's a scummer and who isn't, I'll be more than happy to tell you. Okay, just give us one now. You can't say that and not just give us one. A give real us douche? one that was a douche. A real douche? Yeah. All right. Let me just tell you. I work the doors... Cipriani, there was another place called Pastis. Back in the day, it was a very trendy model. All the guys from The Sopranos would go there. They're actors, though, whatever. Yeah. But they, were, they were actually good guys. They would always hit me at the door. They were good guys. Right. Um, they were good guys. I actually got close with their agent, a guy, Roger Haber. He represented like four or five of them on the show. But I'm going to give you a douchebag. Class A douchebag that if Tommy was in his heyday and I didn't need, not need, I just, I was in take care of your family mode because right. that shit never leaves you who you are. When I say who you are, I maybe that's right. the wrong thing. Instincts don't leave you. Right. All right. So one night, it's, it's a pastiz event. As soon as I get there, I'm told, um, I'm working the door at Pastis. Now, the owner of Pastis, so I'll give people, you know, go out and do it. The owner of Pastis, his name is Keith McNally. He owns a place called Balthazar, another big-end French restaurant. He was always into the English-French bistro thing. Pastis, I think the show uh, Sex in the City put them on the map. And right. he, had another, he had another joint I always worked. was more low-key crowd, not a lot of movie stars, but it was always packed. It was called Schiller's. Then he had another place called Lucky Strike. It was endless. But those were his money makers. So one night I get to test these. Now I work, oh, I worked another place called Tau. Tau is on 58th and Madison, okay? Right. Right. Now, Tau was a different kind of place. You got a lot of rappers and all the sports teams would come in there. And, you know, I could tell you, I'll give you a two tonight. How's that? I'm going to give you a Tau one because I got ADD. Okay. He's a big movie producer. I'm working in, all right, yeah, I, it meant nothing to me. It really didn't. And I, I was actually aggravated being there anyway. I was tired, fucking, my feet were killing me. Whatever. I'm in Tau. Now, in Tau, sometimes I would work the door meaning the front door, but there was six or seven of us. So you would rotate. So I got what was called, um, if anybody, you can look it up online, inside a Tau, Manhattan, please look it up. There is a huge Buddha. It was like, 
it, it was very like a, um, for ambiance and food, unbelievable. Really, a beautiful place to look at and eat in. But forget it. Anybody that was anybody would go there, especially in the years I was there. 2007, 8, 9, like probably 6, in those eras. You know, I would work. Once you get your name gets out there, everybody wants to use you. And then it turns into, you know, you're doing private work for these people. So here we go. No, Tommy, I'm going to end it right now. I just want to tell you about one scumbag. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for the language. I apologize. I do mean that for the ladies that are here. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> get to the creep's name. <laughs> so I get told that Jerry Bruckheimer, I don't know who the fuck he is. I care less who he is. Yeah. Laura Norton, right? Yeah. I don't. Well, they tell me about all these movies, but they tell me, Craig, do me a favor. It is the general manager. You're going to be, but the living room, the dining area. Make sure nobody goes near Mr. Bruckheimer. I was good at taking orders. All right. All right. Who the fuck is Mr. Bruckheimer to me? Like it, like it bothered me a little bit. I don't know why. For that night, it, it irritated me a little bit. Maybe I was tired. I was working too many hours. So I said to one of my friends who's great fucking, ba great security guy, amazing, Eddie. Avila. I say, Eddie, who's this fucking Bruckheimer guy? Oh, big, big Hollywood wig. He produced this. He made this movie, that movie, this movie. But he had a set of demands. No pictures, no autographs. When he's done eating, he wants to be walked out. He wants nobody near him. He don't want to shake anybody's hands. He don't want this. He don't want. I mean, the, the list of demands this guy had. First of all, I got to tell you, compared to the next guy, I understood why. People wanted to see him. And I'll give you his name. It's Rod Stewart. Class A douchebag. Sorry for any Rod Stewart fans. Douchebag. So I didn't understand why anybody wanted to fucking shake Jerry Bruckheimer's hand anyway. Like, like why? Why? Because you made a movie? I mean, honestly, I don't get it. I don't get that. He, his heart pumps like ours did. I don't get it. I never did. Long story short, Bruckheimer wasn't a big deal. But me being me, especially, I was tired. You know, um, he's walking to the door. And, you know, there are people that go out stargazing. They look for this. They know who he is. And this one woman wouldn't stop. And her husband was even worse. It's like embarrassing. Ooh, Jerry Bruckheimer. Anyway. Um, all right, listen, listen. When he gets up to leave, he doesn't want no pictures of this or that. Here's what I'm going to do. And I would do it with the paparazzi, too. I would let them do whatever the fuck they want, as long as they took care of me. That's the truth. Um, I'll give you some space. I'll make believe. I don't know nothing. Get a quick picture and fucking I'll act like, hey, what are you doing? You know, whatever. But I'll give you enough space. That happened as he's walking to the door. And what he did, like, like a little girl, like, it was so important to him that nobody took, and he wasn't eating with like his gumada or maybe he was a, I don't want to say, he wasn't with his boyfriend or his, I don't know what he was. Well, it don't matter. Well, yeah, it matter. But anyway, he wasn't with a, with a man or a woman. He was by himself. He, he was with somebody and they were writing. It looked like a business meeting type of thing. And I just didn't get none of that shit. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Like, it, not nobody really wanted your picture anyway, buddy. Rod Stewart was different. There were a, a, there was a crew of women. There were probably about eight of them. They followed this guy all over on his tour. They followed him everywhere. So Stewart, I get to Pastis. They tell me Rod Stewart's coming in right after his concert at Madison Square Garden. He's coming in with about ten people. Again, strict rules. He's got to be walked from his limousine. I'm at the door, so that's my gig now. When he gets, when his limousine pulls up, we'll let you know. You know, I had an earpiece, fucking CIA, whatever. And we got to walk him in, make sure no, no pictures, nobody shakes his hands, no autographs, the whole bit. But what happens is people, man, these, these people know, bro, when they're obsessed with these stars or whatever you want to call them, they fucking know their next move. I'm telling you, it's crazy. And I got to learn it from working it. So Stuart 
has all these demands. I already fucking can't stand him before he gets there because I hear about these crazy demands. Like, who are you? I don't even like your music. Fuck. That's what I'm thinking to myself. You suck. You know, outside of maybe one song, Angie. I don't know. I don't. I can't remember. Anyway, um, a whole bunch of women come. Right? Of course, who they got, they're going to come to the door, man. Now, Pastiche was a place, just like a lot of them, forget Cipriani. Cipriani was invitation only. There's no such thing as reservation. So, right. Pastiche was, like Tao, you had to have reservations to come in. People would wait for two hours if they didn't have reservations, and they would wait there in the freezing cold. These women come running in. It was winter. They come to me at the door. I got my partner, Kevin, next to me. Bronx guy. Fucking, fucking a man, Kevin Watts, if you're listening, I love you, buddy. Um, if you ever come across this, you fuck. Anyway, um, another teamster. Um, I tell him, I said, did they tell you this? all this fucking guy, all these things? Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. He looks at me, goes, I know what you're thinking. I said, no, Kevin, this is ridiculous. Really? Come on, who gives a shit about him? I mean, these people are his fans. Craig, please... <laughs> Please, just it's easy. We walk them from the fucking limousine, sit them. They're gonna sit them down, and and then we take him when he's done eating. We're gonna take him back to his car, and he had all those strict rules: no pictures, no shaking hands, no autographs, none of that. These women come to me. We just follow. Is Rod Stewart coming in? We heard he's coming in for dinner. How they know this shit? I have no idea. Now. I'm supposed to either say, I don't know what you're talking about, or well, I have no knowledge of who's going to come in. That's the answer you're supposed to give. Me being, I was tired maybe again that night too, and I didn't like the list of demands. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I heard he is. <laughs> My boy Watts is watching, he fucking laugh his ass off. I'm not proud of it. No, it's spiteful shit. I get it. I get it. But you got to understand, I mean, I couldn't understand the whole pedestal thing, you know. And not only that, yeah. I'm, I'll keep saying I was tired. <laughs> but anyway, you know, yeah, as a matter of fact, I think he is. What time? What time? We just left the concert. We raced here from Madison Square Garden. So for anybody that doesn't know, Pastis is on Little West 12th, they call it. That's why they yeah. call it the Meatpacking District. Okay, it's is, like yeah. really Ninth Avenue, Tenth Avenue. It's yeah. Okay, Madison Square Garden's on what Thirty Fourth and yeah. Madison Thirty Fourth and Seventh Eighth. Yeah, Seventh Eighth. So it's not that far, but it's it's a little way. They beat him to Pastis. How they even know? And then I confirm it. I fucking confirm it. So now they're not leaving, but I do tell them. Listen, I shouldn't have told you that. But my angle is, I'm going to make a few dollars. Now, right. that, that's always the angle. It was always, but let me, th you know, it would always end up with, let me see what I can do for you. It would always end up with that. <laughs> but, but I developed such a hard on for him that it, it wasn't about money at this point. So they wind up, he winds up, the limousine pulls up, fucking snubs him. They're screaming, Rod, Rod, we traveled with California. This tour, they're naming every tour they've been traveling with them. Left. I mean, city after city, these people, I, I, you got to be nuts. Goes in, eats, they're begging me, please, we just want to just. I said, I can't let you in. I can't let you in. Maddie knows this story. So I said, all right. I felt bad. I felt fucking terrible for them. I really did. I said, they traveled all these places. This, this ain't right. It's not right. Again, play the game. As we're walking him out, it's your only chance. He's not going to sign nothing. I'm telling you, I can't let you get that close. And my boy Watts is going, we're going to get fired. I know it. You know, it, it just, he just, he, he knew it. We didn't though. But we get him outside. It's cold. This is how much of a douche he is. This is why I say he's a fucking douche. I give them, me and Kevin give them enough space. They get a couple of pictures, but it's as he's walking. He won't stop. They're screaming at him. He hears them saying, we brought, they're, they're within six feet. Right. Rod, we just left California, Baltimore, the whole tour they, they're naming. 
they're showing ticket stubs. I mean, it was out of control. Like, if I'm saying to myself, like, I wanted to slap him. Like, you don't fucking have a heart like you heartless bastard. Yeah. He gets in his limousine. The limousine window, back window that he's sitting in, I guess, I don't know what he did, but he opened it. I'm away from his car. He's already put in the car. I didn't tell him to open the fucking window. I'm back by the door, me and my partner. He opens the window. They go to, like, fucking dive in, like, sign this, sign that. You know, that's their shot. Jump in. You know, these people are crazy. They jump in the fucking window. They didn't jump in, but they were like, hey. they were like, their heads were in. When I tell you this dude, like, pushed their heads out, women, and then they're pounding, please, please, take a picture, sign this, sign this stuff. He, like, just closes the window right in their fucking face, and they pull, and he pulls away. So maybe to some that's not a douchebag, and maybe I'm wrong for feeling that way. Without those fans, you have no concerts, pal. Right. Exactly. So yeah. Rod Stewart, you could best believe he's never on in my house. Nothing. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm sensitive. I don't know. No, you know, I'm right. sorry to, you know, I, I'm literal, but I don't want to, you know, if somebody sees it and says, you know, you said it wrong. I don't I want to say it right. But that's it. I'll hold on to, you know, who there was some really cool dudes too. Women. Yeah. But we'll leave that for another time. But I just want to say we had a great time tonight. It turned into a whole bunch of other shit. Thanks to you bringing up Arthur Avenue and the whole Gideon Irish thing. But that Thank was you good. for the stories. I appreciate no, it. No, no, they're not stories. It's just real shit, man. And, you know, we will save. Oh, what I really wanted to ask the crew is I know we got, um, Thank you, Joe Town. You understand what I mean. Well, what I, what I want to say is this. I know we got, and this is a serious question. Um, most people that know me say, we. Ne I never know when you're fucking serious. But this is serious. This week, we got March Madness going on. And I, I feel like, not that I, we're going to stop anybody from watching March Madness, but maybe... Our community likes watching Mod Mad March Madness. Maybe you like watching it. Maybe Tommy Real Deal enjoys it. Maybe people that we call our friends in our community. Maybe I watch it. I, I whether I do or I don't, I don't matter. Um, I I was thinking I don't know. You know, you know, we always do a show Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe Wednesday, Sunday. Who knows? But we always we're, we're active. I would say we're kind of active. Um, and we always started the Tuesday show. But the tournament started, and um, I do think we might have been a little light tonight. And that's okay, because they catch the replay anyway. But I want to respect our community. If, if the March Madness is, is the thing, then we'll, I'll, we'll take a few nights off and, you know, let everybody sit back and enjoy the, the March Madness, uh, you know. <coughs> I guess we could. I could put a little poll question out there, but that is, I am thinking about it. You know, for for everybody, um, what do you think, Tim? Um, I I watch the games. I don't know the brackets, but yeah, I watch the games all the time. Right. So you know, the games go from early in the afternoon to fucking, especially the first round. You know, I go home at midnight. The games, this games on. I, yeah, yeah, I was watching the other night. Uh, uh, it was like 11 o'clock at night. I was watching uh, CBS Sports. Yeah. And there was a game on from the, you know, <laughs> down south somewhere. Yeah, it's lonely at the top. Yeah, the top. Yeah. Oh, I'm at the top. All right. <laughs> yeah. They didn't do it. I'm down for it. I love, I love all sports, Craig. I, yeah, no, yeah. no. What I'm saying is, you know, maybe we'll take – a week off or, or three, four nights off. I don't know. So it doesn't interrupt with people watching basketball. YouTube don't give notifications. Gotcha, Ruby. So uh, what you're saying is if people have iPhones, they won't even see, like, the poll question. That answers a lot, though, because sometimes I'll put up notifications and people tell me, Craig, I never got it. Well, you know what you have to do in that situation? You just unsubscribe and then subscribe again. That happens to a lot of people that All they right. don't get the notifications. I didn't All get right. one tonight. 
All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to thumbnail the show for tomorrow night, which you know what tomorrow night is. Tuesday night, we do uh, my time in the Bronx. Okay? Right. Um, I, I, I gave my word. Um, they'll start to be a little bit more. I don't know what anybody can sit in them. I can't promise. Uh, I don't really script anything out. I don't know whatever comes to mind will come out. Um, but the table's been set. Let's just leave it at that. So now maybe there'll be some things that people will find interesting tomorrow night. Or maybe yeah. they'll say, I'm never watching his channel again. There's something <laughs> wrong with that guy. I don't I'm only kidding. Listen, I love you guys all. I thank you so much. We hung around. I can't believe we wow. We, and we had a good time. We had a small crowd. It was great. Great to see everybody. I love the I love it. You know, my father used to tell me. He joke around. I don't know if he was joking. Well, you talk to everybody. You you run for mayor. You know, yeah. he was old school. And he used to break my balls about that. Well, you everybody's friend. We want to be the mayor. I want to thank everybody in the chat. Really enjoy your company. Enjoy your comments. Hey, Tommy. Go ahead, Tim. No, I was just saying I enjoy their comments. You know, we had a good time. Love to laugh and joke. And, and, you know, the community is growing. So I look well, forward to tomorrow night. Absolutely. We'll see everybody. Uh, we'll do it, you know, until, you know, Tommy, certain guys, Stevie uh, Marinello's on in here tonight. You know, he's, he gave me a heads up, too. He said, Craig, you know, March Madness. You know, he's looking out for us, too, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, the way I see it, honestly, even if we do something and nobody's in here, they can, you know, they'll watch the replay if they want to watch it, you know. Yeah. But I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm, I'm who are we. I'm just saying, going to take away from, you know. I, I know I like to watch the basketball too. But anyway, we'll see you guys, Bucky. Thanks for hanging with us, brother. Tommy, Francis, always Ruby Almighty, Cinnamon Girl. You guys are the best. Timmy, my man, you know it. GDM, everybody was in here. Joe Town Jack, Davy T. We had a good night, a long night. Uh, Maddie boy, Maddie's on like he's probably in his fourth realm of sleep. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna break his balls. He doesn't know it. I'm gonna be calling him at three in the morning just to fuck with him. The man, uh, dog. Down, Jack, my boy, my man. I just I hope I don't miss anybody. Sal, Benny, everybody, Lisa, uh, little Nick, my my Carmela and Santino, my grandchildren that came in. Tonio, love you, Bucky, always. Um. I don't think I missed anybody. If I did, I'm sure I'm going to hear it. Francis, I got you. Um, Benny. All right. I think we got everybody. Guys, have a great night. I got to rush home because I got to get ready and get my tuxedo ready for tomorrow night's show. Okay? All right, Timmy. I gotta, I'm got. i going to wear a tux with a top hat tomorrow. All right, brother. Well, Sounds good. All right, I love you. You guys have a good night. We had a great time. I think we had some fun. And that's what it's all about. Have a great night. You know how I do, Tim. Take care.